With the time coming up to 25 past two, this is Mike Taylor from BBC Radio WM in the West Midlands uh, welcoming uh, listeners and viewers from all ports to Edgbaston uh, on a most gorgeous uh, June day for the first of two games here today. The first uh, is in the Charlotte Edwards Cup and it's a meeting of last year's two finalists, the Central Sparks and Southern Vipers. Um, it will be, it's still very much possible for the Vipers to defend their title. They've got some work to do. It is still possible for the Central Sparks to get through to a second final, but an awful lot of things are going to have to happen. Um, and I'm not remotely qualified to explain. Happily, others are. Um, and we'll find out during the course of the afternoon. We're five minutes from the start here. The uh, uh, attendance will grow during the day, I suspect. Firstly, because it's a gorgeous day for coming to watch cricket, and a lot of people will be attracted by that. Um, and uh, second, there's obviously another a game going on here later. But the early news from here is that the Sparks have won the toss and somewhat against some expectations are going to bat first. Um, so they are going to get first use of a pitch that is just to the right of the centre of the ground as we're looking out from the pavilion in the commentary position here on the third floor. So slightly towards the holly stand side of the ground, but in a, a, in a good spot for anybody coming along. If you're, if you're on your way here listening to this, thinking I'll catch the first few overs on my way here, um, then you should head towards the holly stand side if you want to get a good look. <laughs> um, so uh, the umpires are out there. The teams will be there shortly. Um, we have a, a large commentary team here uh, today, I'm delighted to say. We shall hear from Kevin James in due course, uh, who uh, is with the Southern Vipers a lot for listeners to the BBC, uh, which you'll hear for, uh, from Samara Afzal, um, a, a renowned player in these parts for uh, Warwickshire and others. Uh, we'll still hear from Lily Harvey, who's across from Australia, expert uh, in the Australian game there and rapidly won here as well. And first of all, Claire Jenkins is here, who you all, those of you who listen to these games and watch them regularly, will know all about Claire already. Yeah, I've, I've been inflicted on them quite regularly. Good, splendid. <laughs> well, here we are again. Uh, on an, uh, in an ideal day for two teams with a pedigree to come and entertain. Yeah, and as you, as you mentioned, uh, last year's finalists in the Charlotte Edwards Cup, so this is the competition between the eight regional centres of excellence, and uh, Central Sparks is the West Midlands team. Southern Vipers are the South Coast team, and you mentioned about uh, if you want to want to get close to play, be in the Hollies, but also keep your eye on the ball at all times. Mm. Like, <laughs> well, of course, because you're well, going to be very close to the play there, don't you? Yes, um, the. It, the pitch somewhat off centre today. There are always people who go and sit at exactly the opposite side <laughs> who've got far better vision than I have. Anyway, uh, for those of you listening on the BBC Sport website, um, the, the pictures are available as well if you want that, if you're in a position to watch them as well. Um, you'll, we'll still be bothering you, but you can, at least you can watch it as well um, through uh, the YouTube Central and all the other platforms. It'll be on the Central Sparks YouTube channel. It's free to watch there, so people want to go there. Yep. If they do watch that, please press the like button so, you can, so other people people can find it too. Yeah, easy to find. Uh, the uh, teams well, both have uh, changes from their previous games earlier in the week. Uh, for the Sparks, Chloe Brewer, um, who I commented with Richard Edgbaston a few weeks ago, in fact, um, is out of the team today and Amy Jones is in. For the Vipers, there are three changes. Um, with Danny Wyatt, Charlie Dean and Lauren Bell are coming in. Mary Taylor, Anya Shrubsoul, and uh, uh, two of those that have come out, and it is Freya Kemp is the third who's come out uh, of the team. So three changes for the Vipers, who are in the field, and they don't have to win, but the Sparks definitely do, Claire. Definitely have to win, yeah, and also rely on other people's results, I think, at this stage, unfortunately, for Central Sparks. But, yeah, Vipers look in the box seat uh, alongside... Uh, yeah, the Diamonds, the Blaze, the Black... Yes, the, uh, the, it's it's... It's up to Central Sparks. Mm. They must win, and they must also hope for some results to run their way as we, the Joneses, start. So, Bell coming in from the far end, right arm round, and Jones plays that through the covers. Beautiful shot from Eve Jones there, left-handed. Goes right across the real estate here at Edgebaston in the glorious sunshine. So this feels like a proper cricket day. Sunshine, blue sky, it's not even really fluffy clouds here. It's a beautiful setting and the orange of the vipers is really glistening off the off the green of the grass here. Uh, the Sparks haven't made many runs in this competition this mm. season, but that started with some intent. That was a gorgeous stroke from Eve Jones. Nice. 
She comes, oh, she leaves that down the leg side. And uh, Grace Banbury is the far end to us, uh, the umpire. Signals are wide there, and Harris is at square leg. And we've got Heather Vernon and... Uh, Mel Smith, Mel Smith Warwickshire on scorer on, duty. Like on double duty scorers. today. Yep, yep, double days today, because we've got a double header here. The Bears versus the Outlaws later, but first of all, we've got the Vipers in the field. And Eve Jones crouching, waiting for the next delivery. Comes forward and plays that through the offside again. It's going towards the boundary. There's two fielders after it. Oh, it hits the rope, and that's a f not a four. There. Which in the slot for driving uh, at the moment from Lauren Bell has floated a couple up there to tempt Eve Jones. And certainly if you pierce the, the inner ring, then the odds are very much in her favour. The outfield is usually pretty quick here by this time of year. Uh, a reminder that the tighter fielding restrictions are in place in the first six overs, so only two fielders mm -hmm. allowed out effectively on the boundary in the first six overs. If Jones misses, wafts and misses at that. Yeah, you mentioned the field and restriction. So in the women's game, it is different to the men's game. The field and restriction circle is 25 yards. You'll see that go out to 30 yards for the men's game. And the numbers inside and outside that ring are slightly different as well. So that's why you'll see differences here. Of course, you mentioned about the sparks. Um, yeah, need to get faster off the mark, don't they? Although. Eve Jones against the blaze got 55 off 39, seven fours and two sixes. So we want a bit more of that. Comes forward and plays that straight to mid on, and there is no run. Score is nine for no loss. It's the first over. The uh, no, they have, oh, I think, only passed 130 on one occasion, or, or just over 130, and that was against the Blaze, where they were chasing way over 200 mm. at Leicester. Mm. Um, and that's not enough runs now. I think, mean, like in most of the forms of cricket in this competition. Inflation is rampant. <laughs> yeah, inflation, that's right. As Bell comes in from the far end towards us, Eve Jones comes forward and plays that into a lovely gap there through long off. No no risk at all, right along the carpet, and the score moves to 13 for no loss. Well, I think Lauren Bell might be testing out to see if there's any swing there, and uh, that fairly comprehensively tested that theory in this over. Uh, because she pitched it right up in the slot for driving three times and Eve Jones has crunched all three. That one was straighter, but it yeah. skipped away through mid-off in good, in good order. Eve Jones, as they say, with the cliché klaxon going off, dealing in boundaries uh, there. 12 runs off the five balls she's faced. The last ball of the over then from Lauren Bell. She takes a skippy run up, right arm round the wicket. Eve Jones comes forward and plays that through the point region. There's two fielders after it. They might catch it. But they don't. It's four runs to Eve Jones. So that was a great over for Central Sparks. Another four. Lovely over there from Eve Jones. Four boundaries uh, off Lauren Bell, which would lead you to think that 130, the uh, where the Sparks have been stuck through this competition, is not only is it not going to be enough, but they have their sights set on something rather larger. To bat first here today, if you've picked up the commentary slightly late uh, the Sparks winning the toss and getting first use of uh, a pitch that's going to have four innings played on it today and the first over from the pavilion end is going to be something different Charlie Dean is, looks as though she's going to bowl spin from the pavilion end to begin with to Amy Jones We've been able to watch admiringly <laughs> yes. sitting on a bat the other end four boundaries uh. the game looks very easy from there and uh, Dean will uh, uh, see if she can... My question is, how soon will the, uh, the Charlie Dean fall on the floor? Well, I don't know if she didn't test that too early. And here's her first delivery, and that's all driven away through into the covers rather than through them. And diving stop by Georgia Elwis at extra cover means there will only be one run, and Amy Jones can go back to leaning on the bat again. <laughs> Yes, uh, Georgia Elvis is looking looking at her elbow. I think she's got a scrage there because it's a pretty, pretty rough bit of uh, field in there on that uh, used strip that she fell on just. Eve Jones is uh, taking a long look around the field here. The sh There's a shorter boundary to the offside as Dean comes round the wicket to the left-hander and on the full takes this and hits it hard up to mid-off, where it's a, a juggling piece of fielding from Alice Monaghan, who at the point where it was already certain they were going to get a run, attempts to fling the stumps down. 
<laughs> leaving the bowler somewhat nonplussed. But they get one. Eve Jones to 17 and 19 for no wicket in over number two as the uh, Sparks needing a win and preferably a big one to stay in contention in this competition are off to a flyer. Dean bowls again, full outside the off stump and uh, uh, Amy Jones is driving through the covers and it's running away, it's very quick, the outfield and picks up four, it teases the chaser and just tips over the rope in time. So five boundaries in the first nine balls of this innings have got the Sparks away to 23 for none. Because we've got left and right handed batter, which is also uh, keeping the field warmed up. They're all coming alike at the moment for the Sparks. Here's Dean, right arm off over the wicket and drifting onto the pads of Amy Jones. There's a, a, a strangle the peel from Dean. He's drifting comfortably down. 23 for no wicket. Long on and sort of roundish mid wicket have gone out to protect that boundary, which might get quite difficult on the, the shorter side, the leg side, and uh, here's Amy Jones swinging to the leg side and beating short fine leg, running away towards the rope at long leg, and they're going to be back for two. It's quite well chased down there, because it's not a long boundary in that corner of the ground. No. I imagine it's quite dry out there as well. It must be running quite quickly, I imagine. So. 25 for none. In the second over, the Sparks having chosen to bat first. More people coming in all the time. Dean bowls full and she's driven off the thick outside edge. It's going to be four runs all the same for Amy Jones running backward a point. And with the two deep fielders out on the leg side, there's no protection. So that's another 13 from the second over. And the Sparks aflame in the set after two overs at 29 without loss. Yes, because uh, we should point out the, to uh, listeners that the Joneses aren't related. Um, but, uh, yes, and is it too early for uh, keeping up with the Joneses uh, joke? Kevin, that's set Kevin Well, as soon as you've just done it... Uh, uh, um, he's, he, he enjoys my jokes, do you see? <laughs> he doesn't know what I'm talking about most of the time, but he, he enjoys the dad jokes. Oh, he's a granddad now. It's granddad don't, jokes. don't mention it. I mentioned don't it mention once, it, but I think I got away with it. Yeah, I think you're all right. Excellent. <laughs> So Lauren Bell, after a, a bit of a bit of an over the, the first over, she got uh, Eve Jones took a liking to uh, to her bowling. So what, what's going to happen the second over? 29 for no loss, or for Lily Harvey, no loss for 29, just to keep the Australians in the game there. Bell round the wicket. Eve Jones comes forward and plays that to long off, and that's a lovely dive there, lovely gymnastic dive. And they get through for a single. Score moves on to 30 for no loss. Well, there's a little bit of protection out on the l offside that time, which mm. Bell didn't have in the first over to Eve Jones, and the deep cover had gone out. And that is quite a long boundary out to that side. They've switched around now, so it's the leg side to Amy Jones, yep. um, who is looking away into the distance. She's twiddling her bat with intent as Lauren Bell decides to come over the wicket to the right-handed Amy Jones. And Jones comes forward, but just defends that into the offside, and there is no run. It's a beautiful setting, as you say. We've got a smattering of crowd in all of the stands. Have got, uh, have got little clusters of people in here, and you can you can probably hear that coming through in the background as well. It's nice to get a crowd in here for this double header here at Edgebaston in the glorious blue sunshine and the, the grass looking resplendent as Bell comes from the 25-yard circle in to Amy Jones. Plays forward again, but straight to point field, and there is no run. So Lauren Bell's obviously getting her line and length a bit better now. I wonder what total the Sparks have got in mind coming out mm. to bat first. Because, again, if you've been struggling for runs a bit, you look at the conditions today and think, let's go and try and score, I don't know, 160. Well, that would be but nice, you yeah. can get into trouble, can't you, doing that? If you if you set the aim too high, then you can get into trouble early on. You can, but you know it's the, it's the pressure of runs on the board, as they say. As Bell comes into Jones, who plays that late through third, and it's going to go down for four runs, four easy runs there. It sort of dabbed at the last minute as it went past her, at, well, sort of shouldery, heady height. Uh, another four runs to Amy Jones this time, and the score moves on to 34 for no loss. 
It's very well adjusted, though, yeah, she's by uh, Amy Jones, because it was it banged in short outside off stump, and there was just a moment where she decided whether she was going to try and take that on over the the ring of fielders. And once yeah. it's over the top, it's going to be four down to th down to third. You could almost feel the. <laughs> she's thinking of oh, there is no run. have to get a result here yeah. the uh, no, I think that's pro it probably shocked the Vipers a bit that uh, the, the Joneses have come out and found some gaps here because that's been the problem for Central Sparks as Bell comes into Amy Jones who plays that once more towards sort of cover point no run that's the end of the over so three <laughs> the scorers are loving this the last game I'd had here, we had two umpires, with two umpires were A. Harris, uh, Dan Harris and Anna Harris. <laughs> Keeping them on the metal. Uh, so, Lindsay Smith to bowl slow left arm, and the first delivery is drifted in right to the toes of the left-hander Eve Jones, who only dabs it away to mid-on. The two boundary fielders here are long on and deep mid-wicket, although round from there and this is crunch a full toss hit hard down the ground just to the onside of straight and well fielded by Dean who although she needed two attempts to pick that up and get the throw on the way did it quickly enough to deter a second run so it's one to Eve Jones who's 19 35 for none in over number four out of 20 in the Charlotte Edwards Cup fixture field switching around for the right hander on strike there's nobody deep on the offside it's going to be long on and we wicket back the other side and down the wicket comes smith back in the crease goes amy jones making room but hits it hard on the bounce to extra cover amy jones will be hoping she gets an innings like the one she played against sunrisers where she got 51 off 34 balls so only a bit of that. only game the uh, sparks have won so far in the tournament now the reverse, a uh, paddle down, running down fine towards third, and it's going to be hauled in just in front of the rope. Well, the fielder chasing down there, and they're back for two. 37 frost in front of the umpire, and again going back to make room. Didn't time this. Comes off an under edge. Away into the covers. Alice Monaghan, I think, that he trots in to pick it up and throw it back. Oh, field change. So the mid wickets come in from the edge of the circle. It's all done in a rush, so they're all against the against the clock, mm -hmm. but going in to try and cut off the run through third. And down the pitch this time. Two or three steps down the pitch and taking on taking it on over mid off and away for four. A lovely clean strike from Amy Jones, who's twenty one at the end of the over, and it's forty one for no loss, the sparks in four. Lovely shot there, wasn't it? I mean, we're still in the power of play, so there's fielding restrictions, so hitting up and over is a good idea. One bounce, four. But it's looked easy so far. Yeah. There's, looks, there's been time to uh, get into position and play strokes, and it's a very confident start from a team that's been... that must be a little short of it. Yep. The form from last season, in this competition anyway, hasn't been there. But it's not yet over. No. And but don't you think that winning is a is a habit? You know, you need to get into it, don't you? I mean, we, we talk a lot about momentum, which is a bit of a sort of cliche word, but um, it, it, it is. When I mean, you look at the other end of the table, for example, I was watching Sunrises in the week, and they they are really having a struggle. And you know that that good things can go in a row, but the, the opposite is also true. Yeah, and so. I think in these competitions where the fixtures are so close yeah, together. They are. I mean, they really are packed in, um, tight together. That's particularly the case. Uh, Charlie Dean's back for over number five. On the far end. There's a changed ends there as Eve Jones just plays that straight to the short cover fielder and there is no one. Danny White there, I think. Uh, Danny White, of course, the highlight of her career was, and uh, George Alwis was uh, playing club cricket with me at the end of my career. But, um, you can ask them later. As uh, Dean comes in around the wicket, Eve Jones struggles with that one, but sort of manages to get it behind square but the w wicket keeper does the tidying up you'd better name the club now that you've uh, <laughs> it's Mia outed Heath. them <laughs> yeah <laughs> playing Mia Heath they were, they were only Littleys then as Dean comes round the wicket to Eve Jones left hander plays that straight to mid off and there is no run score is 41 for no loss 
Just keeping a little lid on it here. Yeah. M m early momentum from Spartan. These, these games do change so quick. One over can change the momentum. Yeah. Dean to Eve Jones. Oh, she's bolder. She's clean bold, Eve Jones there. Timer didn't look quite right on those last couple of... Uh, didn't quite get Dean from the far end. So ch the change of ends has worked well for Charlie Dean here. And she's bold the Central Sparks skipper there. Eve Jones goes for 19 off the 14 balls that she's faced and the score is now 41 for one unless you're listening in Adelaide and you're related to um, uh, Lily um, it would be one for 41 that just drove, drove right over the top of that she just floated yeah. right into the crease and uh, Eve Jones just drove right over the top of a straight ball and looked pretty crossed to miss that yeah and it just just went underneath I mean deep Charlie Dean obviously foxed her there. And then we've got Davina Perrin coming in now. Very talented young cricketer, yeah. Davina Perrin. Yep, and of course one of the uh, under 19s. Got themselves into the final of the under 19 World Cup. And um, I'm really excited to see what those players will bring back mm. to the game, what they've learnt and things. So, um, well, hopefully we're going to see a bit of it now. It's a lovely yeah, stage yeah. to play on, a test ground on a lovely afternoon more people coming in all the time against the champions it's the stage is there for okay. Davina Perry yeah against Thunder she got 28 of 32 balls including 4-4 four four. so Central Sparks would be looking for her to get some more boundaries as we're approaching the end of the fifth over still in the power play here at Edge Baston Central Sparks chose to bat here and Southern Vipers in the field in their bright orange Dean over the wicket to Davina Perry, the right hander who pushes that straight to the short cover field, and there is no run. 41 for one. Well, this has restricted it and really taken the, the early wind out of the Sparks' uh, oh. charge. To a long way back on that boundary, it'd be a mighty attempt to take them on. Yeah. Oh, he's bold. She's bold. Davina Perry, that's the second one this over. Goodness me, the timing. They're not getting the timing that the pavilion end here, Central Sparks. And they find themselves 41 for two at the end of the fifth over. So uh, two wickets down, in, still in the power play. One more over the power play to go. But yeah, not uh, not timing that right. And she uh, she goes without scoring. Some very clever variations in that over. Mm. That was much quicker and forced through. And Perrin was on the back foot, looking to pull it away towards the mid-wicket fielder, who was really deep, yeah. I, I think. Those of you watching the pictures might already have spotted it. It sounded like it was an under edge. Yeah, it dragged it on. Probable under edge. But it's a big hiccup. Two wickets and no runs in the over. See so what the Sparks' response is. See where their confidence is, fragile or not. Yeah, when you've lost a couple of wickets, whether you dare to keep the hammer down. Anyway, yeah, that's it. Um, Claire, Kevin James is going to come in and tell you yes. all about it. Thank you, Mike. So Kevin James is going to join us as we see Erin Burns, our Australian in come to the crease to bat with Amy Jones and Erin um, Burns got 41 off the 23 balls she faced against the Thunder five fours and a six in that one so um, let's hope she's focusing on that from a Central Sparks point of view as Kevin James comes in I suspect he's got some abuse to, to hurl at no I'm, I'm I've been waiting for this moment again Claire uh, yeah, it was Wormsley it. early May it was. we were together now we're back together again we are they usually try Love and keep it. a spot, though, don't they, Kevin? <laughs> sure. <laughs> 54 wickets for Charlie Dean now in the Viper shirt. Mm. That's uh, played up to uh, mid on by Amy Jones off uh, start of a new over from Lindsay Smith. She is actually now the uh, Vipers all time wicket taker, highest. Mm. Uh, she went past Tara Norris uh, in her now. last game. Charlie Dean took mate. Charlie Dean, yeah. yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. 54 wickets. Uh, Tara Norris had 51 who held the record until then. I'm sure Central Sparks will be delighted that she's back playing. <laughs> yeah, missed the last <laughs> game, of course, because all these England players are in and out of the sides, aren't they? This is Amy Jones's only game today. She won't be playing tomorrow, mm. by all accounts. That's driven out square on the offside by Erin Burns, the Australian. That's fielded out there by Nancy Harmon. No, sorry, oh, that might be mm. Georgia Elwes, actually. Yeah. At uh, points. Good start from the Sparks and a good, good comeback. Good start, and then uh, I think Mike said took the air out of it, didn't it? It has, yeah taken the sails away from their start of the innings. It's cut out to point. That's fielded by Ella McGacken, who's back in the side. Got 41 in the last game against mm -hmm. Thunder in their uh, game during the week. 
There's Lindsay Smith from the Pavilion End. Comes in the game. Bowls round the wicket. That's a lovely shot by Erin Burns. Over mid-off, one bounce four. Beautiful, nobody there. Georgia Adams is up on the circle. Picked her spot well. Nice shot there, that was. I like that. Central Sparks will be enjoying that. Um, You'll have to ask Lily about uh, our Australian import. Oh, yes, yeah, she'll know everything about the she Aussies. <laughs> what she doesn't know what about the Australian know. players we'll this game is not worth worrying about. <laughs> 46 for two. Two more balls left of the Smith second over. She's on the back foot there. Burns can't find an angle. And the Smith comes quickly across and fields. 46 for two then. And that, that run rate that was at 10 at one stage is yes. just dropping a fraction, just yeah. under eights now. Smith comes in again and bowls. Burns hits high and over mid wicket. She be, could be Whoa. caught by Danny Wyatt and is. Whoa. Caught deep mid wicket. Danny Wyatt right on the boundary. Takes Burns. She's gone for four. And 46 for three, having been 41 without loss. It started so well. Kevin, what happened? It's, it's since I've come on. <laughs> I'm not blaming you entirely, you but I'm not letting you get away with all of that. <laughs> <laughs> it was an easy catch in the end for Danny White, I'm afraid. Uh, that cow corner in front of the Hollies, and it's a short boundary, but uh, not made it, I'm afraid. And Erin Burns is shaking her head as she comes off. Well, she might. Um, four runs to the total. So, I was getting, always getting all excited. That was going to be a lovely innings there from Erin Burns. Well, she's been in reasonable form. I think she's 76 yeah. runs before today, so you add four onto that. That's 80. She's striking yeah. well, isn't she? 128 per 100, which is pretty high. Yeah, and she was doing doing very well in the uh, in the Rachel Hayhoe in the games, and she did as well. We've got Abby Freeborn coming to the crease. Abby Freeborn, it used to be down uh, our way. A while back. Oh, right. well, she, well, we, we, we sort of pinched her from what was Lightning and is now Blaze. So she yep. moved across a couple, of, a couple of seasons ago. A lot of these players, don't they? They sort of have done the rounds a little bit. Katie George was at Hampshire Women and then she went to Western Storm and then has come via you guys as well. Are you off? I am. I'm going, I'm going to. That was quick. I know. Well, not oh. too much of a good thing, though, Kevin. I'm going to leave you wanting more. <laughs> I'm, going to, I'm going to have a little uh, cup of tea now and you're going to be joined by Dr. Samara Afsal former Warwickshire player is going to take over from me. So 46 for three. Amy Jones, the good news for the Central Sparks, that she's still there, the England batter. She's 22 of 15 deliveries. And Abby Freeborn is yet to face. So the three batters out so far. Eve Jones for 19. That was off 14 balls. Davina Perrin, none of just two deliveries. And Erin Burns just gone for four. 41 for one, 41 for two, and 46 for three. That Super start from the Central Sparks. Uh, Samara has just been undone a little bit. Yeah, a bit disappointed, um, obviously, as uh, they Central Sparks off to a... They certainly were. Now it's uh, Georgia Elwes with a right arm medium paces into the attack, and Amy Jones works that low full toss down to mid on. Takes the total on to 47 for three. But we've seen enough T20s. We know that it changes in a flash, and it has done. Absolutely, and you've got two very experienced batters out there for Central Sparks, so they'll be looking to build a partnership and uh, get Central Sparks to a good score. I think they will still be looking at 150, I reckon, here. At one point, they were 10 and over, as you said, and I thought, mm. oh, maybe a 200 on the cards. It was on, wasn't it? Elwes to uh, Abby Freeborn, then, and uh, she comes in from that far end. Freeborn pushes forward out towards uh, extra cover. Good bit of field in there from Charlie Dean, who's always lively in that uh, area it looks a good pitch it does it's a lovely um summer's sunny day as well so um and it's nice to see so many spectators as well here for the women's game it's a double header we've got uh, the bears playing next yeah, big day of cricket here at edgbaston as always bowls abby freeborn cuts misses and taken by Faltam standing up to uh, the stumps 47 for three the score remains halfway through the uh, seventh over just a reminder that the Sparks won the toss and elected to bat first. One change from the uh, side that lost to the Thunder. Amy Jones, who's currently at the North Strikers' end, uh, comes in for Chloe Brewer. As that's pushed out towards mid-on. They're going to take a quick single. That's well judged. 48 for three. Sparks, uh, I don't know. I thought Sparks at the start of this season, Samara, were, were going to be one of the teams to look out for. And it hasn't quite proved in this competition, has it? No, it hasn't. And I wonder how unsettling it is as a team as well when you've got players coming in and out. And particularly, as you said, with the England stuff happening and the under-19s England day, there's a lot of um, changes. There is. That's driven out by Amy Jones. Not really timed. That's another good piece of fielding from 
Charlie uh, Dean. And it doesn't help Emily Arla injured. Absolutely. Um, a brilliant bowler, Emily Arlett, always a, a very economical wicket taker, and uh, it doesn't help. She's not there. Izzy Wong, obviously, strike bowler, doesn't help that she's not playing. Amy Jones probably won't play tomorrow, can only she play today. Here comes Elvis again then and bowls, and that's high over mid off by Amy Jones. That's a beautiful shot as well. She's done that two or three times already in her innings. You can see why she's a top, top player for England, top player around these parts. And she's already got a couple of half centuries in this competition so far. 52 for three at the end of the seventh. Yeah, that's a great shot from Amy Jones. She judged that right in the slot for her and uh, hit it straight uh, to the boundary. So um, I think Amy seems to be aware that she's not playing tomorrow. So she's uh, <laughs> trying to make the most of uh, her innings today for the Sparks. And I think um, the Sparks will be relying heavily on her for a, a big total here. We certainly will be, yeah. She's... Uh Got good pedigree, four test matches, 76 one-day internationals, 85 T20 internationals as well, and was part of the World Cup squad that played in South Africa during the winter. I think she's got, hasn't she got, um, along the corridor here, one of the executive boxes is named after her, the Amy Jones box, isn't it? Yes, yeah. and Amy and I played club cr cricket together for about 10 years for Warmley Cricket Club. Oh, right. um, she was about nine years old when she started, I still remember. And I and you were 10? I wish I was 10 at the time, but I remember seeing her bat and I remember seeing her wicket keep and think, and I knew that she'd play for England. She was just so talented. She stood out. All yours? That uh, was a quick flick and a quick single and there's a try for a run out, but uh, Abby Freeborn makes it in to the uh, nine strikers end. The score is now 53 for three with Amy Jones batting on 27. And we've got Abby Freeborn batting on two. We've got the uh, skipper George Adams now in to bowl. Uh, George Adams, very talented, has got lots of uh, experience behind her. She bowls um, from off break. As she comes in to Amy Jones, who plays that straight and it goes straight to George Adams' hands and comes out. Uh, no run there. Yeah, she's had a steady tournament, four wickets, economy rate of seven and over, and which isn't bad for a spinner in this year's competition. George Adams back into Amy Jones, who plays a beautiful on drive, and they run through for a single. Abby Freeborn looking for a double, but it wasn't on there. I'm just looking at their results. I mean, three losses. I mean, Northern Diamonds and the Blaze, you kind of, you know, understand that. But, I mean, Thunder... That's one. If you're gonna if you're gonna qualify for the tournament, that's one game you've got to win, isn't it? Absolutely. George Adams there to Abby Freeborn who gets an edge, but it goes through the uh, slip cordon and they manage to get through for a single. I'm just thinking, did you ever play here when you were playing for Warwickshire? No. So at that time, the Warwickshire women would play on the um, Colts ground. Oh, the next door to yes, the right. Yes, yeah. I think it was yeah. a two years or three years later that um, finally the women uh, okay. got to play on the main uh, ground, which that's is a nice. Shame. Yeah, it was a shame, actually. But, I mean, it's nice now to see the girls playing and in front of quite a few spectators as well. So, you know, it's progressing quite a bit, the women's game. Georgia Adams, and that's a lovely shot by Amy Jones, but goes straight to the field rep cover for no run. Yeah, it's their second game here this year in this competition at uh, Northern Diamonds game where they lost by three runs. That sounded like a good game, that one. Yeah, I think... Um, I don't know, is it worse sometimes when you lose by two or three runs? Or is yeah. it kind of like, actually, we could have won. Back foot there from Amy Jones, and she kind of slashes that to the mid-on region for one run. That's the end of the eighth over. The score, 56 for three. So four runs off that uh, Georgia Adams uh, over. So three losses and a win for the Central Sparks. This match actually is a rematch of last year's final at Northampton in this uh, competition. Vipers beating the Central Sparks by six wickets on that day. Amy Jones, top scorer with 27 on that occasion. She playing in that one. Maya Boucher was playing in that. Not available for the, Spark, uh, for the Vipers today. I think she may be available tomorrow when the Vipers go up to the Northern Diamonds. Yeah. This is the only Charlotte Edwards Cup fixture on today. There's Charlie Dean. He is back into the attack. Two overs, one maiden, two for 12. I think that is, if I can read that uh, right. As Dean comes in with her off spin. And bowls to Jones. Jones drives hard up towards deep mid-on. Ball's just bobbling a little bit. They'll take a single, though. And 
and the total moves on to 57 for three and we're in the ninth over of uh, 20. This is the th fourth meeting between these two sides in this uh, competition. Vipers have won two and the Central Sparks have won one. That was down at Hove in August two years ago. And of course they've already beaten the Vipers in the Rachel Hayhoe this year. Yep, I saw that good game that was as well. Yes, it was, yeah. It was a comfortable victory. That was down at Hove as well. I'm sure the Sparks would love to play the Vipers every time at Hove. In fact, it's 1-1 one, one in the uh, Rachel Hayho with the Vipers winning at Wormsley. There's a lovely deft sweep shot by Freeborn. That's going for four. Very, very fine indeed. Just sort of held the bat there, opened the face. And that is a beautiful shot. And uh, Amy Jones just gives her a little fist pump as well to say well done Abby Freeborn she moves on to seven of six and the total moves on to 61 for three love that shot yeah lovely delicate sweep shot there from Abby Freeborn uh, I think they'll be looking to get uh, maybe at least one boundary every over now yeah trying to re-establish the innings after that fast start where they were 41 without loss after or in the fifth over she does the same on the other side this time little ramp shot it's not going to quite go all the way to the boundary but they'll oh, they pick up one well done, Ella McGacken, who's running quickly from behind square on the leg side to keep the batters from running the second. 62 for three. Freeborn's moved on to eight. It brings Amy Jones back on strike. As Samara says, it's uh, this, is, this is quite big for the Sparks. Amy Jones needs to bat a lot of these overs now. I'm sure she's aware of that. If she stays out there and plays the way she normally does, the Sparks could end up still with a decent total. What's happening there? Is there a few people moving in the crowd? Oh, is there a window? Is there a window shining? They're looking over, because it's not over the bowler's arm. It's a little bit more to deep mid off. Just wonder if the sun's shining on something there. No, maybe it's something else. Oh, there's a few people moving in the stand. I don't, well, they're, but they're way to the right oh. as we look. There's nothing I can see directly no. in front of the batter. Or is it that person in the yellow? No. Oh, they're still there. Here's uh, Dean. Down the wicket comes Jones. Drives. It's gone through square. Past the diving Lindsay Smith. Emily Windsor is after it. She'll pick it up just inside the rope in front of the Holly stand. That infamous stand where as the day goes on, and I'm sure that will be the case tonight, where it's all right if you're fielding out that way and they like you. And if you're fielding out that way and they anything other than they like you, you can get a bit of stick. Bit of friendly stick. 64 for three. Jones back on strike and Jones drives into the gap square on the leg side. Alice Monaghan comes in off the boundary away to our left. And it's 65 for three. Have you sat there and watched games in the Hollies? I have actually. Have I've uh, seen India Pakistan play in the Hollies. I've seen uh, Pakistan England play. Oh, okay. So, uh, yeah, it's a quite a fun stand to be in, actually. Give them play. No, no. No? I'm well behaved most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> it goes. You didn't have enough drinks then, as that's pushed back to uh, the not. bowl and there's no run. End of the over, nine done, 65 for three. <laughs> Just one, two more drinks and then you would have done. I don't know, I'm quite good actually. I, um, I'm i always well behaved. I, uh, I actually, I, I tell other people as well in the stand not to get personal with the players, especially if there's a dropped catch, they all go crazy. Oh really? Yeah, if there's a dropped catch, oh, it doesn't matter whose team you're on, you there's abuse. So you act like an unofficial steward as well? I have to now. I have to be on my best behaviour because I'm on the board here at Warwickshire. So if I'm seen oh, misbehaving, right. that'll be it. Telling off. Oh, right. I didn't realise you were on the board here as well. On the EDI, so the right. Quality Diversity yeah, yeah. Advisory Group, which is, uh, yeah, it's nice. Okay. Very impressive. Yeah. Doctor as well? Yes. God, where do you fit it all in? Don't. <laughs> Struggling at the moment. <laughs> Children? Got a little one. She yeah. plays cricket as well. Yeah, she's seven. She's coming in shortly to watch some of this game and the next game. As George Adams comes back in, and that's the Riven to the onside, and they run through for a single. Thought about the second, and no, it's uh, not George Adams, is it? There's been a change of bowling. Yeah, Lindsay Smith. Lindsay Smith's back on. She could also, you could also become the club doctor. I mean, there's n there's more roles for you there, really, if you wanted it. Well, I did look into that actually, but it's, it was a further <laughs> three years of studying, and I can't I can't study anymore. That's it. I'm done with studying. Abby Freeborn on strike now as Lindsay Smith comes into bowl and she just comes out the crease and just paddles that to the onside backward of square leg and they run through for a single. Ella McGacken out there. There's a, there's a few around but that holly stand is fairly empty at the moment so there's no worries about fielding there. 
but that will get loud. I love the I love the beer snake <laughs> things with the with the um, glasses they do. Well, it's not glasses, are they plastic glasses they do there? Fair Amy Jones on strike. She plays a reverse sweep shot, which goes to the full fielder at a short find leg. The innings has just lost a bit of momentum, hasn't it? From those first few overs, 17 off the first, and there was 12 off the next, and just with those wickets, it's just you just feel it's just it's just lost a bit, isn't it? It has uh, the Lindsay Smith. Oh, and that's just missed the stumps. How did that miss the stumps? It's gone through the stumps and past the wicket keeper, and uh, they run through for a single. It's a missed stumping as well, isn't it? It is. Maybe Freeborn's come a couple of paces down there, and that looked like the arm ball there from Lindsay Smith. It just looked like Feltham had just got the ball on sort of the outside part of her glove. Wasn't able to take it cleanly, but that was a chance. Yes, very unlucky for Lindsay Smith who comes back into ball and that's a bit of a sweep, a slug sweep down to leg side, past backward of square leg and they run through quickly for two runs, although it was close and Amy Jones could potentially have been run out. That was, a, that was almost a chance there as well, wasn't it? Feltham's in front of the stumps there, the ball just bouncing in front of her, which is difficult to take, but a direct hit. I think Jones might have been struggling. I think she was struggling. Yeah couple of paces out of her crease when the ball went past the stumps. Amy Jones just flicks off the pads onto the leg side, again collected by the fielder backward of square leg and they don't go for the double this time. And the score moves on to 72 for three and that's uh, 10 overs completed halfway through. Samara, you're still on. Your job is not done. But mine is for the moment. Uh, Mike Taylor from BBC WM is coming back. Another quick comment from Samara, and then you'll hear Mike. So we are halfway through the match. Central Sparks here winning the toss against the Southern Vipers. This is the Charlotte Edwards Cup. Both teams are playing their fifth game of the Cup. Central Sparks need to win all three of their um, remaining games and also rely on a few other teams to lose. That's a bit complicated. Um, if they are still to stand a chance of getting to finals. So the Vipers much better placed third on the table. And uh, But again, it's an important game for them. Now they've got a strong team with their England players returning. And uh, welcome, Mike, on to the commentary box. Hello, Samara. What do you reckon a winning score he's here batting first? Is Elwish coming in to start over number 11 and back goes Amy Jones and finds a gap here. He's cutting it away through. It's gone quite well in front of square. It's gone to extra cover and chased out to the boundary, hauled in just inside the rope and there's only time for two runs. I, I worry for the Sparks. They're slightly stuck between two stalls here. They, they started out thinking we can get, get 180 plus here and now I wonder what they think a good score is. Elwis is on the way. Keep her up to the stumps. And uh, Jones is across the crease here and scooping this away. Square on the leg side. They've got one. And it's very smartly fielded out on the boundary. So they will only have one. I think 160 from this point on would be reasonable. And yeah. I think they would think they can defend that. Be in the game with that, wouldn't you? Mm. 75 for three, 41 to Amy Jones. Who is at the non-striker's end here as Freeborn pushes that and takes on mid on and makes good ground to complete a safe single. That's one more to Freeborn who's 10. 76 for three. So more people moving into each block of the stand all the time. And she should see a good finish the first game as well. She looks like it's going to be a competitive score. In comes Elwis. Takes a bit of the pace off that and it's well picked by Amy Jones who scoops it over extra cover off the back foot and gets four runs. That was well judged. She adjusts late very well, doesn't she, Amy Jones? The second time we've seen her do that and a bit of pace came off the ball and just took, it made the adjustment and lifted it very deliberately over the field. Yeah, so that's a lovely shot. And uh, she, you know, she knows exactly where she's hitting it, where exactly where the fielders are, managed to get it uh, above both of their heads and uh, to the boundary. And I think she looks like she's um, trying to get as uh, many runs and trying to speed up her strike rate as well. She's 45 and waiting for Elm Wiesen across the stumps again. And uh, tucks this towards short fine leg, doesn't beat the fielder. And uh, Elm Wiesen can't believe that, has walked away with... Uh, 
hands on her head. She thought that was through. She thought he, Amy Jones had almost stepped, well, she had stepped over the line of the ball. And looked like she was going to get in a terrible tangle, but nipped it away from the stumps just in time. And faces Elwis running in again and takes, he hosts it straight to mid off. What a soft way to get out, and how unfortunate for Amy Jones having made 45 and trying to open up a bit in that over all sorts of inventive strokes. And at the end of it, perishes with a pretty soft dismissal, a chip to mid off, and the sparks are 80 for four, and Jones gone for 45. Yeah, very unfortunate for Amy. She was uh, getting very close to her 50, and uh, just as we were saying, she knows exactly where she's timing that ball and where the fielders are, but she's hit it uh, straight to the um, fielder there at uh, mid-off. And time for another change in the commentary mm. box. Lily's coming in, I think. Yes, Lily's oh. coming in. Thank you, Samara. More from Samara in a few minutes. 80 for four. Uh, the Sparks. As Katie George, who'll be next to bat, he's coming out at number six with some re repair work to be done from the Sparks innings, which started so prominently when they were 41 for four, uh, 41 for no wicket in four overs, and now at 80 for four, wobbling a fair bit. As uh, Lily Harvey comes in, I, I don't know what a good score is now, Lily for the Sparks here at 80 for four, but it's, I tell you what, it, the, what it, their horizon for a good score is a lot lower than it was 20 minutes ago. Yeah, good afternoon. Um, it's had a really good start, didn't they? Like you said, it is. It, brilliant uh, start for the Sparks and like I said is uh, at the beginning it was a, a must-win game um, they just need to, to, to do well in every single aspect of this match really today um, you'd be cross to get out like that wouldn't you going so well chipping uh, that ball from Elwis to Charlie Dean at mid-off 81 for f uh, 80 for four had 11 overs this is Georgia Adams to bowl over number 12 and Freeborn's down the pitch driving to long on and they take one. Yeah, it's interesting as well because because you think of what usually would be a, a relatively good score you know should they try and aim for something like one, 160, 170 mm. but then Vipers have a, a really strong top order so um, with something like that that's that's could possibly be quite uh, chaseable for the Vipers. I think it would. Katie George to take strike for the first time and uh, oh, round arm delivery for Adams and it's cut away through extra cover nicely placed by George who wants two here and he's called through for them by Freeborn whose call it was for the second one and uh, that was well judged and they're going to have to push it now uh, a bit the sparks which brings its own dangers We're still only in the 12th over to be taking a lot of risks 83 for four, little hop as Adams approaches the crease, uh, starts the run, little trot up to the stumps, and he's driven away through extra cover, and this time there'll only be one. It's smartly fielded by Emily Windsor. So they get one. Um, new New South Wales recruit, Georgia Adams. Uh, interesting there, she's actually signed a, a professional contract with the New South Wales Breakers over in Australia for the Australian summer. It's a big chance. Back, oh, and this is skidded through by Adams and Freeborn going back to cut. He's beaten. That's a great opportunity for Georgia Adams. It go is. out and play in Australia and enjoy and something entirely different. Yeah. Off goes Adams. And this is a little paddle, uh, just very fine past the wicketkeeper. And they're going to get two well-judged runs here, Amy Freeborn. Yeah, crafty by, um, by Abby Freeborn there. She's looking for the gaps and she's she's hitting them nicely at the moment um like i said she's she's got to really um make the most of this innings here take a certain amount of responsibility the batter has been there the longest adams bowls and freeborn it sets as if to come down the pitch and then aborts and defends out on the offside 86 for four in 12 overs the women's big bash have been a, a, a little bit more established than this competition has a, 
how can I put it? A bit more in the, it's had a, bit, a little bit more mass market exposure a bit earlier. So yeah. for Georgia Adams to go into that, there'll not only be all the conditions to uh, uh, to get used to going in, in Australia and being you know, playing overseas and the playing conditions and all that, but the whole atmosphere around the tournament is what it's on the way to being built here, but it's a little bit more down the track in Australia. Yeah, I think uh, Georgia would have had a similar sort of experience possibly in the 100. Um, yes. I think maybe even more so actually because uh, it's been a huge talking point at the moment within Australian cricket and, and England cricket is the fact that um, you know the the big bash is older and it has been going for eight years now in the women's league but the hundred has brought in so many more fans and people um playing at big grounds like like the ground we're at today at edgebaston sure. but yeah the women um in australia are playing at the, the second the second ground so not pulling in much of a crowd so yeah it'll be interesting to see what um what georgia makes of all of this and it'll be interesting to see what she can do in the aussie summer talented player it's a big chance to go and play uh here though uh, the sparks with work to be done at 86 for four in 12 overs and now we're going to see lauren bell who got rather rough treatment at the start yeah she did um usually she's very on it lauren bell so yeah like i said experimenting around i think a bit at the beginning and and yeah she needs to kind of find her groove and And here she is, a bit of a hop and a sprint to the crease and drift down the leg side. And there's a good, I think that was Lauren. A huge yelp as that went down the leg side and it's called wide. And uh, having gone for 22 in her first two overs, good pressure on Rod at the start of an over when that happens. Do you know what Lauren Bell's nickname is? Go on. Um, she's uh, nicknamed the Shard. Do you want to have a, have a guess at any reason why? Okay. Here she is, ponytail bobbing, rushing into bowl, fall outside the off stump, and square driven by George think, to backward um, point. Her height is definitely mm. uh, given her that one. Do we have a number as to what height she, she, she was? I would, I would suggest, and they're all scattered over a huge acreage, but she would be the tallest player on the field at the moment. Yeah, but visually. I, yes. Um, I, I'm guessing she's not far from six feet but that's a wild guess and she's 90 yards away as she runs into bowl this is going to the leg side as well but so was katie george so it takes her on the boot and it's going to be a leg by as uh, bell tried to follow george she's it's it's a bit of a stomp back at the moment to the start of her run by uh, for for lauren bell well, i th think yeah. it would be fair to say whatever ig is is not really enjoying her day at the moment uh, um she is six foot, according really? to my uh, to my research. Wow. Yes. Oh, she got a job in a carpet <laughs> job. Here's uh, uh, Lauren Bell on the way, passing the umpire balls. Uh, oh, and it's completely deceives Freeborn with a slower delivery that was fallen. Took her on the boot, and looked close. We're not the, looking out the window here. We're not dead in line, but that was close. Yeah, we're at a slightly bit of an awkward angle. We are, but. Um, most of the fielders went up for that one. Um, umpire not interested. Lauren Bell was interested. Yeah. And uh, I don't think that has lifted her mood all that much. As she goes back to the right to the edge of the 25-yard circle with a skip and now sets in. It's a real direct sprint to the stumps and bowls full to George who adds insult to injury by levering this wide of mid on. Good stroke manufactured there. Took it almost on the full and managed to steer it past mid on and away for four runs. That's well played by Abby Freeborn who's 17 now out of 92 for four. Not much has gone Bell's way at the moment. Because I don't think she's doing a lot wrong in this over, Lily. No, she's not. She's not. Um, obviously, you know, new into the England side as well, so she's uh, dabbled a bit with, uh, you know, representing her country, and, and she's usually a, a top wicket taker. Mm. Um, so, yeah, it's a bit surprising uh, today. 2020 is a hard game. Mm -hmm. Bell goes slightly wider of the crease, takes all the pace off this, and it's square driven by Freeborn out to the cover sweeper, who's Winter, who's was a, he's 180 yards away from where she was like two moments ago. Mm -hmm. um, right on the other side of the ground and has kept them down to one. 
It's a very big acreage here if you're chasing from one side to the other. 93 for four. And in over number 13, Sparks having chosen to bat first, here's Bell. And ma making room here, George, very nearly. I thought for a moment she was going to cut that onto the stump. She got in a real tangle. Again, the pace taken off the ball well. And to bottom edge goes back down the uh, pitch and there's no run. 93 for four. And actually, there were quite a few good things in that over. The, the variation of pace was, was pretty clever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, look, I, I can see kind of Katie George, you can see by her, her body language, she's, yeah. she might be getting a little bit frustrated, but I, I think they're, they're at a relatively good position at the moment, to be honest. They've, they've steadied the ship, uh, Freeborn and George. Uh, like you said, 93 for four after 13 overs. So, yeah, they, they're doing okay. Mm. Um, they've still got time, like we said, nearly at the 100 mark, so... Yeah, they just need to uh, just keep on running those those singles and those twos where there's opportunity and uh, not not worry about um, slogging them just yet. I don't think. Uh, 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 the new bowler is I'm quite trusting the scoreboard Lindsay at the moment. Smith. It's Lindsay Smith who's yeah. back. Yeah, and so the first ball he's driven back down the pitch by Freeborn to Lindsay Smith, the slow left armour, who's into a final over here, one for 18 so far. That's kept a lid on the sparks a little bit. It's wide of the crease, and this is driven by Freeborn, steering it wide of long on, and they're going to get one. Join the, um, the Vipers ahead of the season, did Lindsay Smith, after moving over from the, the Diamonds. It's quite a big move isn't it from one end yeah. of the, the country to the other <laughs> yes it would be um smith coming round the wicket and oh tempting george down the pitch and uh, she's a bit fortunate here katie george that one squeezes off the toe end of the bat off the pad runs down fine on the leg side and they're back for two rather lucky runs and smith has had a nice control of flight here and none of the batters have really been able to Get on top of that. 96 for four. That's the, the life of a travelling sportsman, though, isn't it? You? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, especially for cricketers, not only you, most of the time living out of a suitcase. These days, you've got to be prepared to kind of move from one end of the country to the other. Smith bowls and George making room again outside the leg stump. Hammers this away wide of long off and gets one as Elwes moves around to do the fielding. And they can't pierce the field here. Boundaries are in short supply. Yeah, they just need to, to stay cool, calm and collected. The the sparks do at the moment. Um. Round the wicket comes Smith. And Freeborn's reaching a bit for this. Beating the flight again, I think. She's set to come down the pitch and then change the mind and end up reaching for it and just pushing it out on the offside. Mm -hmm. Last ball for Lindsay Smith who's bowled very nicely here, and Freeborn moves right across to the offside, sweeps, and was hit on the pad, probably outside the line of off stump. It's the end of the over, and a good spell. I make that four overs, one for 22 for Lindsay Smith, and that was a pretty tidy job. Fourteen overs. Maybe it is going to be a slower bowler's day, because the, those who've taken the pace off the ball here have shown quite good control, Lily. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, like we've seen, you know, Charlie Dean, uh, Lindsay Smith, um, George Rowe was all in the, the wickets column. Mm. And none of them going for much punishment. Uh, just at the time where the Sparks are wanting to step it up. But three overs from Bell, three overs from Dean, so they've got one still left. Elvis has bowled two. And he's always to bowl a third over, and that's well down the leg side. So it's called wide, 98 for four. I've only seen the five bowlers used at the moment. But uh, most seems carrying enough options. I don't think they're going to particularly need to look around. Elwis bowls right arm over the wicket to George, who hits over the top, over mid-off, and one bounce and away for four runs. That's the most authoritative stroke we've seen for some time from the Sparks. And uh, Katie George with a 
good clean strike over mid off raises the three figures 102 for four sparks in the 15th over yeah i think vipers are just trusting their their bowling attack that they have going on at the moment yeah. i think they can um you know they, they obviously think they can keep the sparks down to a relatively uh, low score with the, the bowling attack they have at the moment long off mid wicket and deep square leg are all out on the boundary and this is flicked off the pads by katie george there's certainly going to be one it's quite a long boundary so maybe there ought to be a second but they think not yeah. the outfielding has been smart katie did not want to run that second one mm. there she held her arm out and you could hear the no from up here i think that's quite a long boundary out there on the leg side towards the priory and raglan side of the ground Pitch is well over to one side today as Elwis bowls close to the stumps and is driven hard down the ground for four, probably by Freeborn. Yeah, he's going to have the urge to get there before the uh, chaser arrives. That's well struck. There's a bit of Dover. Yeah, we said uh, Abby Freeborn was going to have to take it upon herself and um, she's doing relatively well at the moment. So um, I think Sparks are definitely relying on, on this partnership here to build up the Sparks score. 107 for four. In comes Elwis again, and that's leg side, and it's not only is it wide, but it's cannoned off the pads of the wicketkeeper, Nicole Fulton, and so they've run another one. So it's two wides, and it's 109 for four. It is quite nice to see them taking the opportunities, though, because, um, you know, sometimes when they're they're under a bit of pressure like a must win game you know like i said they make silly mistakes but but they're going okay at the moment and they're rotating the strike really nicely here i think they want 160 here's elwis coming close to the stumps again and this is flicked in the air by katie george hasn't hit it well enough to reach the long on fielder so it arrives on the bounce and they will have one so freeborn is rather no george is 12 and 110 for four. Georgia Elwish just trying to get out of this over now. Still two to come. And she bowls to Freeborn and bowl off stump. Drove right over the top of a fuller delivery. Trying to turn it to the leg side. And Freeborn, just as she was starting to accelerate, he's out. Bowled by Elwish for 23. And again, the Sparks momentum is checked at 110 for five in the 15th over. I hope that wasn't my fault after I just mentioned she was going along nicely. <laughs> 2020 cricket is no respecter of that, I'm here to tell you. Definitely not. Sawn off plenty of batters. Um, but the wickets, the, this drip of wickets, every now and again, there's just been an opportunity to peg back the, uh, the sparks, and it's allowed a certain amount of control to be kept by the Vipers ever since those first four overs since then it's felt like the, Vib the Vipers are holding the reins at this game this yeah match. yeah it has we were thinking right at the start you know there was a bit of chat up in the box here and it's like whoa the Sparks are, are flying at the moment um, but like you said yeah the, the Vipers well on top I think at this point um, Sparks had 41 in the first four overs and since then have lost Eve Jones 19 Perry Nort uh, Burns 4 Amy Jones for 45 and now Freeborn for 23. Wickets for Elwis, two. Uh, two for Charlie Dean and one for Lindsay Smith. And uh, some relief for Elwis in an over that wasn't going very well. We see Beth and Ellis come out to the crease now. She only played a few games for the, for the Sparks so far after making the move this season from uh, Lightning, who are now the Blaze. Off goes Elwis to complete the 15th over, and Ellis is turning a ball into the leg side, and there's no run. So uh, Elwis, 2 for 20, sending in 3, 110 for 5. The Sparks, having won the toss and chosen to bat first, five overs to come. Lily Harvey's going to predict the exact total that'll be scored by the Sparks. It'll be an exclusive, and after that, Kevin James will join. Good luck. Um, well... <laughs> Uh, it's a bit of a tricky thing for me to kind of uh, predict as it's, uh, you know, my first time over here in, in the UK on a commentary uh, game. That was nice of Mike to put you on the spot like that, wasn't Maybe it? I thought he like was quite a nice bloke the until then. <laughs> um, yeah, what are you making of uh, what you've seen of this game so well, far? Well, I mean, I, 
I, I go back to the fact I think he's a very, very good wicket. Mm -hmm. And I think probably for too long in this Sparks innings, they kind of, uh, they've not really sort of found a pattern. They started and nothing mm -hmm. in, in, a, in a flash of a pan. Here's Charlie Dean to bowl her last over and that's driven up to mid-wicket by Katie George, formerly of the Vipers Parish. Knows a lot of these uh, players of the Vipers, played for the Hampshire women, played some club cricket around just outside the Southampton area as well. In the main thing, she stops it. It is uh, slightly disappointing for Katie George, isn't it? Because, like you said, um, on um, you know the, the the sparks. It's Beth and Ellis that trying to sweep that one. It's down the leg side. Is that going to be called a wide? Maybe it's just brushed the pad. Half taken by Nicole Falton. Dot ball there. 111 for five. We're in the 16th over here. Ellis is on. Well, he's yet to get off the mark. That's the first ball she's faced. Katie George is 13 it's at mid on. Ellis Monaghan comes in off the rope, and Ellis. Is off the mark. One thirteen for five. One twelve for five. Tell a lie. Um, so a couple of overs. We were saying yeah. that maybe they were going to reach one sixty, one seventy. Uh, it's not quite looking like that at the moment. Obviously, they'd have to go about ten and over. So what are you thinking? Uh, they're going to sort of reach. Uh, well, here? I mean, one fifty is still pretty good. There's a lovely shot over extra cover from Katie George using her feet, and uh, Emily Windsor isn't going to get round in time. That's a beautiful shot. Well, shots like that. Lily and uh, you know 160 probably is uh, it within range but as you see you know once you lose a wicket and the momentum goes a little bit then all of a sudden what looks to be a decent total suddenly you're 20 short and there's still four overs to do there's still a lot of cricket a lot of life potentially in this Sparks innings as Dean comes in this is the last ball of her fourth over she's bowled Katie George trying to give herself some room cuts it away on the offside she misses it the ball clatters it into the stumps and Dean has picked up another wicket and the Sparks are 116 for six. That's it, talking about that momentum, isn't it? You know, you, the partnerships start to build and then as soon as you lose that wicket, it's going to take them a, a couple of balls at least to, to sort of regroup and, and start scoring again. So um, Sparks just really needed someone to, to stick together um, as Amy Jones, pardon me, Amy Campbell walks out now. Three wickets for Charlie Dean. Which uh, takes her Vipers wickets tally up to 55. She's now four ahead of Tara Norris, who's uh, now, of course, with Thunder. Charlie Dean, the I say the um, the leading wicket taker of all time, but of course we forget that these teams have only really been formed. You go back to the Kia Super League, which was what 2016, somewhere around there, Lee, I think. Yeah. I know you being an Aussie, you probably haven't followed it as closely. Well, you, you, I th I, do you know what? Having talked to you this morning, I think you do know a lot. The past couple of years, I really have been sort of trying to educate myself on the on um, the England cricket scene. Um. You seem to know a lot, I must admit. It's uh, Amy Campbell is the uh, new batter. Yes, I try. <laughs> yeah, well, for sure. Amy Campbell seems to me batting a little lower than she normally would do. Would that be a fair comment? Y yeah, I think so. I think so. She's at the non-striker's end because Beth and Ellis is going to face the next delivery from Ch uh, uh, Georgia Adams even, as that's uh, pushed her back with a point and that's fielded by Lauren Bell. Yeah, I think uh, with Beth and Ellis coming into the side and then also Katie George coming in before Amy Campbell, I think um, from what I've seen, she's a bowler, Katie George. Yeah, that's driven past uh, a diving mid-wicket there by Beth and Ellis and moves on to two. Looks like uh, Campbell just fell there. She was looking for uh, a second. Yeah, because in the last game against Thunder, Amy Campbell came in at five. Mm -hmm. So definitely uh, way down the list for this one. The sunshine out here in Birmingham. Beautiful setting. Crowd slowly uh, building for the uh, evening game. That's the Bears against the Outlaws. On 17 for six, Campbell faces... Georgia Adams, Campbell on the back foot, steers that out into the gap on the offside. He's, she's off the mark as well. His total is 118 for six. Did you know that um, Amy Campbell used to captain Mark Wood in junior cricket? Great fact, no. <laughs> um, I felt I should have known that, <laughs> the way you it's, put it. It's very interesting, <laughs> I think. Um, Sweep shot, she's wrapped on the pad. May just be an inside edge on that one. Alice will pick up a single. No, the umpire's not signaling leg by. So go on. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I interviewed Amy Campbell for my podcast uh, a couple of months ago, I think before the, the 100, actually, um, or during the 100, actually, last last year. And, um, yeah, junior cricket, Captain Mark Wood. 
That's driven up to mid on by Campbell. 120 for uh, six. When well, whereabouts was this? Uh, Durham. A uh, Durham. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, very junior, I think. It must have been something like, I think she said something like under tens or something like that. Like right. very young. But um, yeah, um, I think it's a very interesting fact. And uh, it is, isn't it? I think she she said she still gives uh, Mark Wood a bit of stick for it. Really? <laughs> that, um, that that she, yeah, she is the captain. I love yeah, that, yeah. Younger, yeah. Beth and Ellis to face Adams is down the leg side. Well taken, Faltam, and it's not called wide. So that's the end of the over. 17 overs gone, and the Sparks are 120 for six. Lily, I love that. I could just imagine Amy Campbell saying to Mark Wood, you stay on. I know you're tired, but you're bowling very fast, and we want you to keep bowling. So don't tell me you're tired. Don't tell me you're ache. Just keep running in. I could just imagine that. At 120 for six, 17 gone, as I say, three to do. Charlie Dean's bowled out, four overs, three for 27. And Claire Jenkins is back with us, I'm formerly back. of Somerset and Derby, who, have you told anybody famous like that, or captained anybody famous like that? No, I wish I had, though. Mark Wood's always, the, when he bowls, I'm always worried that his limbs may not all catch up with him because he, he bowls so fast. <laughs> yes. Everything's going, isn't it? So, he leaves uh, a bit of him behind. <laughs> He's running so fast. <laughs> and then he flings himself on the pitch, doesn't he? Uh, if I captained anybody... Uh, I mean, I've played with people like... Uh, alongside people like Wendy Watson, who won, was a World Cup uh, winner. OK. And uh, Sue Redfern, of course. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, played... Sue played Redfern, the umpire. For, yes, yeah. about to make a debut in the Blast tomorrow. There was Bowles. That's driven over her head. That's a lovely shot, Amy Campbell. But it's not going to quite go to the boundary because round quickly from mid office Charlie Dean, who's everywhere. <laughs> Normally she's around extra cover, cover, mid wicket. There she is popping up at deep mid off. And I've played alongside and against Ian Bakewell, who's still playing <laughs> into her 80s. Okay. 122 for six. And there's a lovely drive again through the gap in the covers to uh, Emily Windsor out at uh, deep cover in front of the Holly stand. Emily Windsor is one of your colleagues, isn't she? She, she is one of our commentary colleagues at BBC Radio Sony. Right. Yep, now TMS and what have oh, you. Yep. How does she fit it all in? Yeah. yeah. Qualified physio now. Oh, my. Yeah. Talking of hats, I mean, we thought Dr. Samara had got lots of hats we have but Emily's got lots of if hats. Emily comes into the box we'd have a qualified physio a qualified doctor I'll tell you what anybody who's got any ailments or problems yeah. now's the time <laughs> to get it in <laughs> 123 for 6 we'd be in good hands as El as comes in over the wicket to Beth and Ellis and bowls and Ellis waits for that and drives again that's found the gap in the covers where Danny Wyatt's doing the Sweeping duties and way to our left, 124 for six. I do feel quite comfortable. If anything happens now, yeah. somebody falls off the chair or you just pull a muscle when you get up after finishing your commentary stint, we've got we've got it covered. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes, I'm Greg. <laughs> I've never felt so safe in a commentary box. Elwes is round the wicket, and that's driven by the left-handed Amy Campbell out to Windsor again in the covers. But again, it's only a single. The Vipers will be happy to keep the boundaries down, down to a bare minimum. You mentioned about Amy Campbell coming in a bit late. Uh, yes, I, I, I kind of have the same feeling. I, I like for her to bat with Abby Freeborn because for whatever reason, they seem, I call them the engine room. When they're back together, it, it works really well. But when they're separated here, it sort of, it, it, it leaves me a little like anxious. So this isn't working. It's low no. full toss, which is swept away. Beth and Ellis will pick up four runs. Nice. Not Georgia Elwes' best ball. No, a bit of a loosener down the leg, should we no. say. And uh, calmly put away, actually by Beth and Ellis, who moves on to eight off nine. Campbell is six off five, 129 for six. And we've got one ball left of the uh, 18th over. So you don't like them being part of you? like to see them better like there in the middle? Yes, I'm, I'm sort of slightly, it's like one of those, you know, uh, Mel Farrell mentioned, uh, I was on commentary with her the other day, she was talking about the boundary because it was an odd shape and it, it, she said, it's like an itch I can't scratch. And that's, that's a bit like <laughs> when they don't bat together, it's, it doesn't feel right to me. Oh. That's a refusal from George Elwes. I think it's 15 points to 75. Yeah. <laughs> Not sure what was going on there, but uh, Elwes was just about to gather herself to let the ball go, and it's just Redford? pulled out of her start, oh, so yeah. maybe not. So George Elwes has got one ball left of her four-over spell. She's currently two for 36. And here she is then, last ball for her in this game. It's a length ball. It's wrapped on the pad. They'll call mm, through for a single. Falton can't pick up the ball cleanly. And a leg by it is to end... The 18th over, and they're 130 for six sparks. Ten off that. 
Yeah, and you, you were saying who did I play with. So mm. I did, I, I don't know if, if, whether people actually heard that, but I did play with George Alwis and Danny oh, White right. in, in club, uh, Amir Heath, uh, very early on in their career and, and very late in my career. It was one of those ones where we might be short, so put your kit in the car. Yeah, so that, yeah. well, that's nice. So, and Samara and I have just realised that we probably played against each other in those days, but she must have been very, you very You two young. have played against each she other? She must have been very, very young, because I'm have you considerably really? older. <laughs> well, you don't look considerably older. Can I oh, just say that, Claire? Thank you very Claire? much, Kevin. Yeah. Yep. You're the height of charm, as always. Other than when you're trying to accuse me of being posh, and I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> what should we got this? We've got some cricket going on. Adams to Ellis. Oh, tries a reverse, and it's going to short third. Lauren Bell will pick that up, and there's just one run. 131 for six. I think that's interesting, obviously, because Danny White and George Rose are both from the Midlands anyway, yeah, like yourself, staff. so that's why you would have played. With in those days, they, they played Mia Heath for club, they played Staffs Juniors, uh, and then went up and then went to the south, migrated to the south coast as Adams comes into Campbell this time, left handed. She comes forward, and oh, that's not comfortable. Oh, she's going to be ru stumped, run out, stumped, whichever, one or the other. I would say, would you say run out? Well, she sort of made an attempt at, at, at the run, didn't she, I think? So it probably a run out. We'll see what the score is put down. But either way, she was out of her ground as Nicole Fulton, the Australian, took the bails. As they both looked like there was a sort of intake of breath and the bat around the wicket keeper and the bails went flying. And that's another wicket down, unfortunately, for Central Sparks here in the sunshine at Edge Baston. We've got a great view. I know you can only see down the channel of the wicket on the live stream unfortunately but we are sitting looking across the the manhattan if you if you will of the birmingham skyline lots and lots of hotels and the cube and lots of lots of lots of building work going on actually and uh, this beautiful expanse of edge baston which i'm sure you've seen on television at various points with the distinctive e in the floodlights and uh, beautiful blue sky here it's a classical summer's day get yourself down here we've got a double header Central Sparks and Vipers at the moment, but the Bears versus the Outlaws later. Do you know what? Until you said that, I didn't realise that the, the lights, the way they're mounted, spell E. Oh, did you I did not, not know that. Well, didn't we, no, they? I didn't. See, every day's a school day. Yeah. Kev? Yeah. Adams into Davis, whose birthday it is today. She squeezes that down and there's oh, another decision. Oh, I thought we were going to have another set of bales flying. But no. Uh, calm down. Calm down. <laughs> it's Georgia Davis's birthday, so we, we don't want any run outs here. As Adams collects herself, and Davis. Ooh, oh, she's clean boulder. She's clean. Did she not know that it's her birthday, Kevin? She called her back. Thing. She, so, you've got to give yeah. her one off the mark, haven't you? Yeah, you've got to give her another chance there. Oh, I was so excited about that. It was a uh, Georgia Davis, who's uh, who's foregone a career in the police to take a full time contract to play for Central Sparks, but. Um, that's a story for another day now. Oh dear. So, Central Sparks, 131 for eight, approaching the end of the 19th over. Not many balls left though, Kevin. No, time's running out as well, isn't it? I, I, it just looks a little disappointing from a uh, Sparks point of view, but that is T20 cricket, you know, yeah. for a few overs, all things can look all rosy, and then a wicket or two, or just something which just triggers Another piece of momentum, and uh, the, 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 slowly but surely, the Vipers have got themselves back in this. And I think I they'll look at the scoreboard here and think, Do you know what, we could have been chasing an awful lot more at one yeah, stage. Yeah. Uh, Amy ba Campbell was run out, by the way, officially. Oh, yeah. Hannah Baker comes forward and squirts that uh, Harrow drive styly past the back of her legs for one run there down to fine leg. That was a yes, not a classical shot there, but uh, squeezed between bat and stumps down for the single. 132 for eight. Not many balls left now. One ball of the 19th. Plays that into the leg side quite nicely there, Beth and Alice, and they get through for an easy single. 133 for eight. We were discussing in the back of the box, weren't we? What's a likely score? And I've got this theory, which is not going to work today. And uh, I know that Sid Egan from Cricket her has sort of proved me wrong, but um, my theory is that in terms of a par score, a team should be uh, the ten, at the 10 over mark, double plus 20, which would have taken Sparks, I think, to about 164 or something. They're not going to get anywhere near that, barring a very big uh, firecracker from over here. But 19 overs gone, 133 for eight are Central Sparks and Vipers in the field, and they're 
beautiful orange tops standing out against the green. Beautiful. That's the, you're the first person I've heard well, it's call them beautiful. I'm got you know being being nice. You are visiting here. You've changed. <laughs> uh, here's uh, Lauren Bell You're to so bowl her <laughs> last over. I had to get one in. Uh, three overs, none for 28. Lauren Bell, who's uh, bowled OK. I, I think mm -hmm. she's bowled a little tighter in this competition earlier. But uh, now there's yeah. a slower ball. And there's a lovely little ramp shot along the ground on the 45 by Bethan Ellis, who moves on to 11, 134 for eight. So five balls left for the Sparks to get as many runs as they can and really put the Vipers under pressure. Yeah, that looked like the right shot to play, didn't it, from Beth and Alice? But she didn't quite get the timing right because I think she she was trying to use the pace of the ball. But uh, as you say, Lauren Bell Slow from ball, this end yeah. this time because she started the other end. She did, she? So yeah. Yep. She's closest to us now, running away from us. Lauren Bell back in the side for the uh, Vipers, as is Danny Wyatt and Charlie Dean, having been uh, taken out of the last game by England. I don't think they'll be playing tomorrow. I just have a feeling they're only allowed to play one game this weekend. There's a drive up to oh. mid-off. Georgia Adams takes it. And that is nine wickets down. Simple catch for Georgia Adams, about stomach height. Baker's tried to go aerial over the top. Couldn't quite get the elevation. She goes for one. It's 134 for nine. It felt like the right, I mean, trying to be more aggressive. That was the right thing to do. Yeah. But not when you put it straight to the fielder who stood on the circ the, the sort of field and restriction circle. So we know that's 25 yards for the women, 30 for the men. Uh, so we know where that catch was taken. If you want distance, Nelly Anderson. So this is one of, another one of our, uh, the Central Sparks under 19s. Did very well at the World Cup, uh, beaten finalists in the first ever women's under 19 World Cup. Mm. And a good, good uh, fast bowler. So we've, we, we've the, the uh, Central Sparks are. Producing uh, some good bowlers. We've got Wong, we've got Potts, we've got uh, oh, Katie George, we've got Arla, we've got Potts coming through, we've got Ellie Anderson now. So, yes, and uh, I think she plays her county cricket at Worcestershire. So, she, uh, she'll she have enjoyed the fact that she had a debut at Worcester earlier in the week. Yeah. Over there. That was her first game, wasn't it? Yeah. Of the season, and the last so game, what yeah. What did she do with the bat? This is a new name for me, I must admit. So, uh, yeah, thank you for putting a bit of colour on that one. As uh, Bell Ooh. bowls full outside the off stump, too wide. And that is a signal to wide. Slower ball again there from Lauren Bell, but just ill-directed. Yeah, and Harris with his arms out there. And we've got Grace Bambury at the other end, square leg. Umpire. Local? Oh, I don't know about uh, no, uh, it. She's, she's, she's a trainee doctor. I'm looking Not right another tomorrow. one. Another one, I know. And another half doctor. I mean, I'm not what are these doctors? You can't get an appointment and all of a sudden you've got <laughs> three or four of them around. There's a slower ball as well and she's playing that shot a little too early. They're too busy on firing. That's that's, that's you can't get can't hold get of a doctor when you want one and all of a sudden we've yeah. got them all around the place. <laughs> They're umpiring and commentating. I know. That's where they are. That's why, that's why you can't get hold of them. Well, they used to be able to get, they used to say they're on a golf course, aren't they? Now we know yeah. they're involved with the cricket. So. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I'm hoping to see Anna the half doctor tomorrow. She's... Um, She's hoping to come along and watch Sue Redfern's uh, debut in the Blast tomorrow afternoon. Oh, OK. Mm -hmm. uh, Lauren Bell to uh, Ellie Anderson. Bowls, and that's full. It's a slower ball as well. Anderson does quite well, actually. Just works that up towards mid on. In comes uh, Monaghan. Just waited for that one. Clever slower ball again by mm. Lauren Bell. There's a few in this over. Looks like she's getting some practice in from when the white ball part of the Ashes starts. I think they start with a test match, don't they? Test with the match. Ashes? Five days. We're going to ask Lily about that later. Yeah. Without uh, Meg Lanny. Oh, that's it. It's all over. And f <laughs> it's a win to England, isn't it? Oh, dear. Hey? That, that, uh, that, that may be a little too early there, Kevin. Do you reckon? Is that an early call? <laughs> yeah. Here's Lauren Bell, runs away from us, gives herself a little bit of room. It's down the leg side again. That'll be called a wide. The Australian machine, it's just a production line, isn't it? They lose one player, another one comes in, because uh, they're very excited, aren't they? I was with uh, Mel Farrell, and she was saying that uh, Phoebe Litchfield, she said she's got a Laura Volvart-esque cover drive, which I'm looking forward to seeing. Oh, really? Yeah, she's the next big thing, I think, with the Aussies. Okay. So she'll slot in quite nicely with Megalani now. But her brain is what they will miss, I suspect. Yeah. Still two balls left here. Two Ooh. legitimate balls. Edge down to third, and that'll be four. Sparks will take them, and that's that's got the crowd excited, hasn't it? Hasn't it? It's the first time we've really yeah. heard them. Lovely. Yeah, there is a crowd here, everybody. There is. Yeah. Uh, Kevin, you missed, because uh, I was commentating earlier in the week, um, we had um, 1,500 school kids in that block down to our left, right behind the dugouts. OK. And they were having a lovely time. And uh, I appreciate that, because my cricket story started with a school trip to Edgebaston. 
to watch uh, Rachel Hayhoe Flint's England play against oh, Australia. Right. And that's Head. where you fell in love with the game. Here's the last ball, if it's legitimate. Slower ball, driven edge, but it's straight to Mary uh, to uh, Nancy Harmon this time. They will complete a single, and that is the end of the Sparks innings at 142 for nine. Bethan Ellis finishes on 16, not out of 15. Ellie Anderson is uh, one not out of uh, two. So that the Vipers will need 143 for victory. In the end, actually, I think, uh, Claire, probably a few more than the, the Sparks uh, look like getting at one stage. Yes, isn't it, it, isn't it fascinating, even in the 20 over, a, a shorter format, that there's game within a game and that, the, that it, it takes on different characters as we go through. And, you know, to start off with, Sparks went mad. You know, they were all boundaries and it looked like it was going to be a massive score. And then Vipers got some wickets and slowed it all up, kept the lid on it. And then even though they, they were losing wickets, they were still somehow getting some boundaries and things. So it's going to be fascinating uh, tussle, I think, with this. And um, as the ground staff come on with the wheelbarrows and all that kind of thing. So we should, should we run you through the score? Hey, I keep going, Claire, because yeah. I think Mike Taylor's coming Mike's in to join you. Mike's always going to do all the technical stuff. So, yes, we've got Sunshine here. This is the Charlotte Edwards Cup. We've got the home team who have just batted. 142 for nine, that's Central Sparks. And the team in the field are Southern Vipers who are from the South Coast. This is the eight regional centres of excellence across England. So this is the layer below England. Uh, this is the regional teams taking on each other. And the finals will be next Saturday at Worcester. So uh, that's what they're playing for. And the finals day, unlike the Blast, where you've got a semi, two semis and a final, uh, with the Charlotte Edwards Cup, and the, the team that is first in the table, or the ladder for our Australian listeners, uh, will go straight through to the final as of right. And then teams two and three will fight it out in the eliminator to see who plays, who finished first. So that's how it works with the Charlotte Edwards Cup. And uh, Blaze looking in the box seat for that that first slot, but still to be decided in terms of the last few results and things. So what do you make of that then, Mike? going to run us through the cards? And uh, yes, we'll, we'll take a, a little wander through the card, yeah. I think. I, I have to, I, this doesn't feel like enough runs to me, no. 142. Not against a I mean, did you, you, you mention in your formula, that would have been 160 plus. Yeah. And they look fairly confident of getting that but there were wickets often enough weren't there? once they had gone through the you know 41 in the first four from that point on every time it looked like sparks were getting somewhere that another wicket fell and some of them were soft yeah yeah i, no, yeah. I think there'll be a few batters thinking they left a few runs out there yeah which is a shame but you know I've, I've i've watched and commentated a lot of the regional cricket and sometimes the people that you expect to get huge runs mm. uh, don't and uh, people you know We've seen certainly the blaze, uh, different players have stood up each game, as they say, that's the cliche claxon mm. going off and standing up for you know, different players going off. But um, yeah, that we've seen different people um, and I mean, Western Storm, all a friend of Gast. Mm. Uh, they're an Irish international um, put on a century at Sapphire Garden. So just sometimes when you, not that that's necessarily unexpected, but it was that first uh, in, a, in a day, but it's not always the people that you expect to put on the big ones. No. So, um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how Vipers get on. And also, Central Sparks have a really interesting uh, selection of bowlers in terms of pace and spin, although some of them are, uh, unfortunately, Emily Arlott won't be playing today. She's, she was on crutches at Worcester, so she's injured. Um, but So we won't have the full array of Central Sparks, but we have got quite a, an interesting mix of pace and spin that we're going we're gonna to see. Uh, this is what happened with the Sparks innings. They won the toss and chose to bat first and were 41 for no wicket after four overs. And from that point on, uh, they uh, tripped up all too often. Uh, this is the card. Eve Jones uh, was bowled by Charlie Dean for 19. Uh, it was 41 for one in the fifth over and almost immediately uh, followed when Perrin was also bowled by Dean for naught. Um, Aaron Burns fell at 46, caught Wyatt, uh, by uh, Danny Wyatt. Uh, first wicket for Lindsay Smith for four. I thought Lindsay Smith bowled with real control. And although she was sort of brought in and out and in and out of the attack, as, as players are used to doing now, but every time she put a lid on the scoring, and with like all the spinners, but I thought Smith did it particularly the left armour, the control of, of flight and variation uh, was just 
too much to nonplus the best. Because she's got a really interesting action. She can round the wicket, as you say, yeah. off and through the umpire. So, uh, mm. and I think that that level of control will be, yeah, will be very useful for the Vipers. I think. Made a difference. A stand of 34 uh, between Eve Jones and Amy Freeborn had them going the right way. Uh, for a bit, Amy Jones, I should say, and um, Abby Freeborn, until Amy Jones, just beginning to accelerate, uh, chipped a drive against Georgia Elmwich straight to Dean at mid off for 45. And that was the point, I think, where the Sparks innings lost momentum for good. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah, she got that lovely, f yeah, 45 mm. off 34 balls, as you say, and uh, I think she'll be thinking that she left a few out there yeah. because she's, a, she's one of the class players in this lineup. Yeah, and as you say, the, I suspect the England players have been told you can play one game, you, you know, mm. one game or the other. So today was her day. This is her opportunity to uh, to get bat in hand because, as I understand it, I think there's a warm up game. I don't know if. Uh, Amy Jones is going to be playing up, but there's a th the three-day warm-up game uh, later. Ooh, is it next week? Anyway, but, but as we head towards the test, they'll want to be getting bats, uh, getting runs with the bat, won't they? Uh, yes. Something like Amy Jones. They didn't quite have the same momentum uh, at any stage after that. Uh, it was a stand of 30 for the fifth wicket. Abby Freeboard and Katie George. So George was uh, bowled by Dean for 17, uh, and then wickets fell all too often after that. Freeborn uh, made 23 and she was bombed by Georgia El uh, Elwis. Uh, Amy Campbell got in a frightful tangle and was run out by Nicole Faltham, the wicketkeeper, uh, skipping round from behind the stumps as Cam Campbell didn't seem entirely sure whether she was going to try and go for a run <laughs> it or was not. A mess, was run out, oh. uh, run out rather than stump for six. Georgia Davis bombed by Adams for in the same over for naught and Hannah Baker falling in the last over, chipping Lauren Bell who um, didn't have the best of good fortune, but ended up with a wicket at the end, uh, caught by Adams at mid-off for one, with Beth and Ellis left unbeaten with 16, and Ellie Anderson won. There were 10 extras, one by two leg buys and seven wides, in a total of 142 for nine. And the bowlers, only five bowlers used, Lauren Bell, four overs, one for 37. Charlie Dean, four overs, one maiden, three for 27. Lindsay Smith, four overs, one for 22. Georgia Elwis, four overs, two for 36. And Georgia Adams, four overs and one for 17 and didn't go for a boundary. And uh, the spinners between them uh, be bowling 12 overs and taking five for 66. And at no point did it feel like the sparks were on top of the spinners. No, really. no, because no, ironically, they were on top of uh, Lauren Bell for her first over. Yeah. Uh, and then Georgia Adams, as you mentioned, she's got the best economy rate of those those five. I was just looking down the down the sheet there. So, yeah. It's, um, yeah, sparks will definitely feel like they've l left yeah. 20 or 30 out there that should have, you know, should have been a bigger score. But it's not over. Uh, 143 is the target which the uh, uh, Vipers will be going for shortly. And this, I mean, they've still got games to play, but this will be the last stand for the Sparks to defend this 143 yeah. because if they don't manage it, then they won't be advancing in the competition. Yeah, we mentioned um, that earlier, didn't we? So mm. not only have they got to win, but they've also got to rely on other people's results, which you don't want. You want it to be in your hands, don't you? And it's, and it's already for that, too late for that for Central Spark. So they really do have to come out firing in terms of their fielding and bowling in the next inning. So 143 they want. Um, there are no other games in this competition today, by the way, but there are four tomorrow. If you want to get out and see a game in uh, yourself, mm. Uh, wherever you're following this game from. I don't know one two of you following it far too far away to get here for that time, but nevertheless, there are four too. games uh, tomorrow uh, taking place. Uh, at early starts of Bristol for the Storm um, against the Sparks. I'm on the commentary for that one. That's I'll there, so you'll be yeah, later. Yep. start the car. Uh, Claire's yep. on a way. <laughs> uh, that's at 10.30 tomorrow. Yep. Uh, at 11 o'clock at Trent Bridge, the Blaze who have already qualified for the last stage, I mean, one or five, uh, against the Sunrisers, who haven't and won't be. Um, at 2.30 at Blackpool, what a super place to go on a Sunday afternoon to watch some uh, cricket. A 2.30 start for the Thunder against the South East Sparks. And at Headingley uh, uh, for the uh, 
the two remaining ga uh, teams uh, tomorrow. That's a later start for the Northern Diamonds. But tomorrow at 3.30, three, at three the Northern Diamonds and the Southern Vipers will be chased up the motorway by Kevin James later. <laughs> uh, so four games in the Charlotte Edwards Cup tomorrow as this competition, which will be rattled off in good pace, we're talking about that, won't we? I, I, I suspect that the, well, uh, uh, my feedback, I don't know about the players, would be that there have been one or two spare, like, days where there haven't been games. Mm. And then we've got this sort of mad back-to-back -back because uh, although I'm actually technically, I can say working. Uh, this is work. <laughs> it's a loose term. Uh, working for Western Storm tomorrow at Central Spark. So, yes, I'm going to be, uh, we're going to be chasing each other uh, down the motorway mm. to Bristol this evening, ready for an early start tomorrow. I'm sure the players would have wanted a bit of a break. And uh, I've made a mental note for myself that I want a day between commentaries because uh, these fixtures, at the, at the beginning of the season, it seemed all right because, as I understand it, this was the morning game. And the Western Storm game was the afternoon because I must have thought that 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 would be a sensible mm. logistics to get to Bristol with a, like half a day to spare. As we see the umpires come back out, so we've got Grace Banbury and uh, Aunt Harris, mm. and I'm going to have a, a little cup of tea. And uh, Mike, you're going to be joined by Dr. Samara Absol, who realise has got very various hats as GP. She's on the um, Quality, diversity, and doodars for uh, Warwickshire. Mm. She's got another hat, lots of hats. Mm. So uh, I'm going to have a little rest, and I'm going to hand you over to Dr. Samara and leave you in Mike Taylor's hands. Good. I only have this job, and I'm struggling with that. Um, uh, the uh, other cricket around the country uh, today, by the way, there are no other games in this competition today. The test match is going on, of course. It's still going on because Ireland have put up a noble fight today. Uh, they, in fact, have gone into the lead there by four runs, 356 for eight, uh, with some uh, strong stroke play down the order from uh, Mark Adair, who made 88, and Andy McBride, he's 85, not out. So with two wickets in hand, Ireland lead by four runs in the test match at Lords. They're T on the third day out of four. And there are two uh, games in the Vitality Blast later, Hampshire against Sussex. Oh, so... Uh, uh, for Southern Viper supporters might also be backers of Hampshire or indeed Sussex, either of those two counties. Uh, and they meet tonight at Southampton. That's a seven o'clock start. And of course here at Edgbaston, uh, where the Bears are playing Nottinghamshire Outlaws, that is a 6.30 start. But the business before us is uh, the target here of 143 for Southern Vipers, which the Sparks are coming together in a huddle to try and defend. Um, because they'll need to defend it, Samara, if they're going to stay in with a chance in this competition. And I'm bound to say, I think they're going to have to bomb pretty well to do it, because this feels a total a little bit light. Yeah, I think Central Sparks will be disappointed, particularly as they got off to a brilliant start. At one point, at the beginning, we thought maybe um, 200 is on the cards. And also they're hampered with their strike bowlers, Izzy Wong not available, and also um, Emily Arlott injured as well. So they'll have to bowl very, very um, well. But we are, they do have a very good um, bowling team, mix mm. of um, speed and spin. So uh, you never know. Strong batting lineup. Um, that they face though from the Vipers and uh, we'd expect Danny Danny Wyatt I think we're expecting to come out Ella McCacken is coming out to open and at the non-strikers end I don't think that is oh it is Danny Wyatt who's gone to the non-strikers end yeah. yes. so uh, McCacken is going to take the first ball and for the, the Sparks, they are going to have to get everything right, I think, here. Uh, Katie George looks as though she's going to open for them from the Birmingham end. It was one of several batters who looked as though they were, they were just about to ignite when they got out. Yeah, unfortunately, only Amy Jones making the... Um contribution Abby Freeborn also stuck in for a while but uh, yes everybody else got off to a bit of a start but couldn't uh, materialize on that so we are about to start the first over of the Southern Vipers innings Katie George at the top of her mark at the top of her run-up we have got Ella McCacken number eight on strike with uh, Danny Wyatt on the other end Ella runs into 
ball and that's played straight to covers for no run the only two fielders allowed outside the ring remember at this early stage of the innings there is a deep square leg and it really is uh, it would be a long carry out there to deep square and there's a fielder back at third right on the rope fine leg is short inside the circle so I really can't afford to be leg side Katie George Katie George in and that's uh, played uh, straight to the fielder at uh, short cover for no run I think she thought she'd got through there for a moment Katie George the sort of hands went up it was very full and McCacken just jabbed it down into the ground but I think for a minute Katie George thought that was that was sneaking through Good start this from Katie George. Wipers yet to get off the mark as she runs back into Ella McCacken who's played a beautiful shot on the leg side. She's lifted that and that's raced away for a boundary. Wipers off the mark in style. An aggressive stroke. Oh, McCacken was into position really early for that. Opened a stance up and flicked it hard over mid wicket. And there is a fielder out on the boundary, but no price of getting round to that angle. That was really well timed by McCacken. Great timing and great positioning. Because mm. there's a mid-wicket fielder inside the circle that she took on there. It's no problem. George running back into bolt Ella McCacken, who kind of just digs that out. Good ball. Good line of length and uh, no run taken. She thought that was through again, Katie George, I think. Difficult isn't it, to judge the length. We saw that happen a bit with Lauren Bell at the start of the earlier innings. Floated it right there to see if there was any swing, and Eve Jones kept driving her through the offside. She's gone very full a couple of times here. Nearly got through. Katie George running back into Ella McCacken, who plays a lovely drive, but it's gone straight to the uh, mid off fielder for no run. Score remains on four. We're approaching the final ball of the first over. Quite a few spectators now around the ground, which is nice to see. Clear, well, almost clear blue skies as well. This being just a double header. You can just hear a bit of chat building up as well, can't you? There's more people coming in the ground. There's a bit of chatter and a bit of noise. George running back into ball to Ella McCacken, who plays again another flick shot. It almost mimicked the first one, and it races away again for another boundary. It, well, it was it was an action. It was like an action replay, and it was well timed again to that pick up over mid wicket. Katie George only slightly just yeah. changing her line to that leg stump, and uh, Ella McCacken right on there. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think Casey George did a lot wrong in that over. But twice picked off by McCacken for boundaries over mid wicket. I think to, it, there's a substitute fielder. Charis Paveley is the uh, fielder who's out there at deep square leg. But it's, I mean, that's a long boundary. I don't think it's just the angle we're sat at um, here. Uh, so I mean, looking on from, we were looking slightly over fine leg in that over, um, which slightly skews it. But I reckon that is. A, a big acreage, poor Pavely out there, and uh, the loneliest person in Edgebrist at the moment. Um, the first over from the pavilion end is going to come from Ellie Anderson, so it'll be seen from both ends at the start of the Sparks' defence of 142 for nine, eight for none at the end of the first over, and she's going to bowl first of all to England's Danny Wyatt, who uh, drives hard into the extra cover gap. Pavely coming in from the boundary to uh, protect that. that means there's going to be a long single for Wyatt to get off the mark straight away. Ellie Anderson played for England under 19s, did very well actually against uh, Australia back in January this year. Probably doesn't get to play as much uh, with Emily Arlott in the squad as well, but no. uh, with Emily Arlott not there today, she's uh, playing. Great opportunity to play here, big ground, growing crowds, lovely day. This is turned off the pads by McCacken to mid-wicket. 
and there's no run. What an opportunity as well to go and play in Australia at such a young age on a tour like that. Yeah, I think she picked up a Pfeiffer as well in one of those games uh, against Australia for the under-19, so um, very promising. Terrific experience for Ellie Anderson. Comes back to the, almost to the edge of the 25-yard circle, and he's now on her way, running into ball, right arm over the wicket, just drifting on the leg side, not very far, but far enough for umpire Harris to call wide. And it's 10 for none. A little margin for error in these games. Drift leg side. We've already seen that anything that's on the pads of McCuckin is going to be pretty confident to take it on over the leg side. Slightly shorter boundary that side. There is a square leg fielder out. McCuckin uh, he's, uh, he's on the pad here, trying to play that stroke again. And Anderson swerved that into her pads. But always looked as though it was going past the leg stump. Yeah, it did. It looked as though it was uh, pitching on or oh, just outside leg stump. McCagan is going to take that shot on every time, I think. There is a, a mid-wicket inside the circle, but square leg is back on the rope to try and cut it off. A bit squarer than uh, in the previous over. This takes McCagan on the hip, I think, and it's probably going to be a leg by. 11 for none as it runs away into the leg side. And... Perrin runs in to complete the fielding. 11 for no wicket, the Vipers, in the second over of their chase of 143 in a game that wouldn't quite be terminal to their chances in the competition if they didn't win it, in the way that it certainly would be if the Sparks don't win it. Is McCacken on one leg here, turning this away through square leg, but there's only going to be one run. As quickly in from the rope to field, Amy Campbell. Kaken is nine. And it's 12 for none. Unforgiving day in the sunshine today. We haven't read any of the big heat yet that we had last year, but it's starting to look up, although not particularly in this box. No, it uh, feels quite cool inside it the box. It's cool in here. Yeah, it's one word for it we use in April. It's uh, turned away by, my, uh, my, by uh, Wyatt down on one knee to heave this round to deep square leg. And they take a single. So 13 for none in two overs. Uh, McCacken is nine and Wyatt is two. Like in a lot of other parts of this pavilion, which is such a big structure, it's so much bigger than what, what it replaced about 15 years ago. But there are sort of shadowed corners in it where you can shield from the wind. But um, in April, the, the, the draft that comes through here, Samina, in April. Yeah, you can imagine it's quite cold. Mm. I'm not one to complain, I wouldn't want you to think that. But uh, I'll keep my coat on. Anyway, 13 for none in uh, two overs. Katie George at the uh, at her at the top of her run-up. She'll bowl her second over. McCacken on strike again. Katie George runs in to McCacken, who again tries to play that on the leg side, and it's gone, it's missed the stumps, it's missed the keeper, and it's gone for four buys. I think she might have got a tickle on that. I didn't see a signal. That was quite cleverly played, I think. George has come round the wicket now, so it's changed the angle, and McCacken was very quickly into position for that, because coming from a, a, an entirely different angle, George, trying to cut off that stroke that McCacken played in the previous over, but took it on just almost just confidently trying to knock it past the wicketkeeper because with no there's no f short fine leg there the the long leg is quite quite wide there's a big opening there just keep me going with the angle yeah, it was a brave shot it's Katie George back in and again this time it's wide collected by Amy Jones like I can just let that one go as it was very wide from her Pressure's on the bowler now, isn't it? I get the reason for the change of angle after she was picked off twice off the pads in the last over. But now coming round the wicket, I think she might go... Yeah, she might change back, I think. That experiment lasted two two deliveries, one corn wide, and it's as you were. McCacken on strike, and uh, that's just... She wafts her bat outside off stump and uh, no run. Better line. 
yeah, I think that is a better line. Even though there's nobody out on the boundary on the offside, they've had to sacrifice that. And there's now a square leg and a long leg out. So, perversely, the two boundary fielders are now protecting the longer boundary. But I think that's... McCacken's forced them into this with a stroke play in the first over. George back into McCacken again, this time wide outside Ofstam, then called a wide by the umpire. It's interesting how the game's evolved. I remember playing as a youngster and we were always taught that the field won't change for yeah. bad bowling. You have to bowl to your field. But now we see that actually players, because of the calibre of how good they are, they can actually get mm. the um, captain to change the field around. Yeah, and, and pressure can be put on in 2020 games one or two balls shift the momentum of the game. You've got to respond to that. George back in to McCacken, who defends that. And um, there's no run taken. Better line and better length this time from Katie George. It was, but because McCacken's now given, make, there's no margin for error now for Katie George. She's tried the different plan. It was a perfectly logical plan, but McCacken quickly worked it out. So they've ended up in this this is not where they started I think when the sparks came out to, to start this innings this wasn't this isn't plan A I suspect we're already on to about plan C here Katie George running in and it's driven beautifully and it's gone through the fielder in the slip cordon area for a boundary it'd be a bowler because <laughs> sometimes when you do actually get it right you still miss out because that was an uncontrolled edge from McCacken and it might have gone to the uh, the fielder there. Hannah Baker missed her by about three foot to her left, but it could easily have been out. And uh, and McCacken's not only survived, but she's come up with four runs. It's a tough game sometimes. Luck favours the brave. Uh, well, there's, some, there's something to be said for that. McCacken is not, not shy of trying. Thank you, George, and it's pulled beautifully and it goes through into the lakeside boundary and that's four runs again for Ellen McCacken. Well, that f would have hurt. She's onto it so early. These strokes that she's taken on over the lakeside, that one's rocking back, but she was into position really early to take that on and hit it hard. I was expecting fireworks from Danny Wyatt, but uh, actually Ella mm. McCacken is the one providing all the um, entertainment out there at the moment. She's playing splendidly. Final ball of the third over, Katie George running in. And Ella McCacken, she plays that straight and it's collected by the mid-off fielder for no run. And that's uh, 27 for no loss of three overs, Southern Vipers. Looks a very talented player, uh, Ella McCacken just 20 and th there are a lot of good there's a very good crop of good of young cricketers coming through isn't there in the wake of all the success that the England team have had over the last five or six years the next generation looks really promising and here's McCacken another one um, at Southampton product this is her first season of professional cricket and I'm sure it's a terrific experience yeah I wouldn't like to be an England selector that must be a tough no. job but she's batting with great authority here come to a, a big test ground like this and at the moment she's in charge and a rather more uh, a senior partner Danny Wyatt is happy to just push a run here at the start of the fourth over from Ellie Anderson push it into the offside take one and go and stand and watch it at the other end very unlike Danny Wyatt well you don't want to get in the way of the show when the uh, <laughs> when at the moment the circus is very much in town at the other end so you Keep out of the way and watch. 28 for none. The Vipers knocking the top off a target of 143 to win here and stay very firmly in contention for a place in the uh, on the finals day. Off goes Anderson to bowl to McCacken, who is into position early and turned the ball away to the leg side. There's no run this time, but she looks like a player who's in form. She's very quickly in position to play these strokes, whether she's been defending or attacking. She's a very strong leg side player. She loves that, uh, those leg side pulls and flicks. We've seen that, there's Anderson, hair 
bobbing behind her and this ball just leaking down the leg side. I think he's going to get away with that. The uh, Macacken trying to paddle it round into there's a big gap if you can get it behind square on the leg side if you can avoid the short fine leg fielder but it was she missed that and it is gathered up behind the stumps 28 for no wicket off goes Anderson I think she wants to be leg side though and McCacken made it a, a step across the crease here to turn the ball away from the line of leg stump and get one down to deep square leg smartly fielded on the rope in front of the holly stand so McCacken goes to 22 out of 29 for no wicket in the fourth over it's already well in front of the required rate maybe the slower bowlers will be able to dampen the rate down that's what happened really all the spinners that from the vipers managed to achieve that off goes anderson and wyatt's very correctly forward push another single yeah, I'm sure we'll see Georgia Davis in uh, yeah. shortly. She might even take the um, next over in Hannah Baker, of course, as well. I think uh, something needs to change. They need some control, don't they? This McCagan's had freedom to play her strokes. Danny Wyatt's faced four balls, pushed him, taken a single, and gone up the other end, which is where she is now at the moment, leaning on her bat as Ellie Anderson turns and quickly into her running goes to McCacken who is pulling to deep square leg and uh, the chance he's fumbled it came low and not held but the first chance to dismiss McCacken missed and they take one on the fumble it's 31 for no wicket and the Sparks I'm afraid can ill afford those yeah I don't know if it just dropped slightly short but um, in uh, yeah the game nowadays we do see players take those I think Amy Campbell they're tricky to judge, aren't they? And, uh, I mean, it's, it's, well, it's 20 past four. Sometimes on that side of the ground, it, it does get a bit tricky in the light, I don't think particularly at that stage yet. But it did come low to Amy Campbell. And I think it's a boundary field that you've got to make a quick decision. Are you coming for it or are you waiting to take it on the bounce? You don't want to get caught in between. There's a change now for over number five. It's going to be Erin Burns. He's going to bowl from the Birmingham end. Erin Burns, of course, the Australian overseas with plenty of uh, experience mm. behind her. Bowling with a cap on. Yeah. A rare feature. See more in the women's game than the men's. Erin Burns comes into Ella McCacken, who's on the strike, who plays it. She tried to play it straight, but she just got the bottom edge and it went down towards the third man region and the fine leg region, sorry, and they managed to get in for two runs. It looked close at one point. Got in a tangle there, McCacken, trying to hit that straight. Gave, it, gave Burns the charge first ball and almost overdid it. I'm liking this confidence. Yeah. This time she just flicks it to the leg side for one run. I wonder if Danny White, as a senior partner, has thought about going in and saying, we've got plenty of time. Or whether you just let, because when we're cacking, he's the, 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 you can feel the heart is thumping at the moment. She's Everything that she thinks she can score off, she's going after. I just wonder whether there might be a time where Danny White says, you know, we're all right here. Yeah. Don't give it away. White's only faced four balls so far in, uh, and we're into the fifth over. Mm. Danny White facing Erin Burns, who plays that and misses, and I don't know how that missed uh, the stumps. Skidded through that. White was late on it. Slanting across the right hander. Erin Burns coming from round the wicket, trying to cut off the scoring angle. Danny White comes out and she's hit that through past the fielder and covers and it's gone for four runs well it was inviting a big full toss Danny Wyatt could have hit that almost anywhere for half a second she might have thought she'd hit it straight to 
Eve Jones an extra cover. But once it was past Eve Jones, it was away for four. Yeah, she managed to hit it between cover and mid off. Erin Burns come back in and she plays a similar shot, but this time controlling it much better and over the head of covers for another four. Danny White's now taken off as well, following the yeah. footsteps of her partner. That one where she went where she aimed it. There's a big variation of length all of a sudden from Erin Burns, a full toss, and that one was a bit short, but Danny Wyatt was already out of the blocks after it. And hammered it over the, that ring of fielders on the offside. Danny's joining into the party as well now. Mm. She faces Erin Burns, and oh, that's gone past into the gloves of Amy Jones for no run. Well, they're right in charge now, uh, the Vipers. Sparks in urgent need of a wicket. 42 for none, 101 all ready to win. I don't know where the wickets are going to come from for the Sparks, Samina, but they better come quick. Uh, Kevin James is going to join you in a moment. Yeah, so five overs gone. The Southern Vipers are 42 for no loss, chasing a score of 143. Earlier on in the day, Central Sparks won the toss and elected to bat first. They uh, started very well, but then had a bit of a collapse. As we're into the sixth over, and there's some problem there for the batter, so the umpire's just stopped the bowler um, in her run-up. Ellie Anderson bowling her third over now. I thought. Sorry. Keep going. Sorry, sorry, Samantha. Thought that would have been a spin again from this end as well. But no, um, Ellie Anderson, she has bowled well and she's uh, going to bowl into Ella McCacken and she's bowled! Brilliant. First wicket for Central Sparks and Ellie Anderson deserved that. She's bowled well. Yeah, she has. Yeah, only a second game. Yeah, in this competition, played the last game against Thunder. I'm not quite sure what Ella McGacken was trying to do with that one. Almost like she got caught in two minds, whether to whip it away on the leg side. It wasn't quite full enough to do that. Then she thought maybe I should just play through the line and straight in the end. She did neither. And uh, she's out. I'll tell you what, it's not very often Danny Wyatt gets outscored. Yep. That's a... Yeah, and it's a good call from, the, um, from Eve Jones to keep on... Uh, Anderson, I thought it would have been quite tempting to change and get another either Hannah Baker or Georgia Davies on, but actually she persevered and a wicket off the first ball. Well, she's uh, had a couple of games, Ella McGacken. Uh, didn't uh, play in the uh, first three because uh, Maya Boucher and Danny White were uh, opening up, but uh, 42 from 37 against uh, Thunder, and uh, she's picked up a pretty handy 26 here. So the new batter for uh, the Vipers is uh, Nicole Faltham, which uh, Lily Harvey will be watching intently in her box hour, Aussie. She's been telling me all about Nicole Faltham while well, we've been off air. And she is, she's glued to the window, watching her fellow Aussie. Ellie Anderson running into ball to the new batter Nicole Fulton who just flicks that onto the leg side for no run. I think the disappointing thing for uh, well, uh, Samara for uh, Nicole is that she hasn't really got going in this competition. 11 against the South East Stars, a couple against Western Storm, one against uh, the Blaze and just 14 against the Thunder uh, two or three days ago. So uh, looking for a score. Well she's got plenty of um, time here now and uh, there with the run rate so she hopefully can get herself in as Ellie Anderson comes in and she plays a beautiful drive and it's gone past covers we've got the fielder coming round and they settle for a single well that's one thing that uh, Faltham does do well she did, that's a very pretty cover drive isn't it that was a beautiful cover drive lovely high elbow very Aussie like yeah and we're just just very correct wasn't it a beautiful piece of timing just 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 a lovely shot but that's what she does she, she's a bit like that but just, just really needs to get going. Danny Wyatt now on strike to Ellie Anderson, who just plays that, dabs it for a single to the offside. Yeah, Danny Wyatt, uh, before today, 79 runs in three innings. Strike rate of 143, that's high. 
That's very high indeed. Not quite at that level at the moment, but was happy to play second fiddle to Ella McGacken. Be interesting to see what she does now with Faltam at the in at the crease. Yeah, it's quite high, especially for women's cricket. A strike rate of 143 is That's high, isn't very it? impressive. Yeah. As Danny White, sorry, Nicole Fulton takes strike. She defends that for no run. Yeah, Faltam in this competition striking at 93, but has, as I say, hasn't really got any runs at the moment. Hasn't really been able to really dominate once she's been out there. Good time for her to score some runs here and not put too much pressure on Danny White. Although I don't think Danny White probably feels any pressure. No, I don't think she does. You're right. She doesn't give the impression of really feeling anything, really, and certainly not pressure. Falton plays that straight and collected by skipper Eve Jones for no run. And that's the end of the sixth over. So then Wipers 44 for one and Lily Harvey will be back into the comments box. Thank you, Samara. So the power play done at 46 for three at the end of the power play were the Sparks, having lost uh, three wickets in the fifth and the sixth over. And here we are, 44 for one, uh, the Vipers. So, uh, Lily, not a lot of, not a lot of change in terms of the runs, but uh, the Vipers a couple of wickets uh, to the good at the same stage. And this is this is just where the Central Sparks just kind of lost their way a little bit at this for a few overs, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, they did. It was kind of yeah, this this over mark and, and this run point sort of as well. And then after that, they they started the wickets just started falling like flies, really. Certainly did. Now we've got Hannah Baker uh, into uh, the attack. And uh, she's going to be bowling some spin. Very talented cricketer, Hannah Baker is. Um, under 19 uh, team of the tournament she made at the World Cup, um, along with Ellie Anderson uh, as well. So, yeah, two out of three of the, the English players who made that team of the tournament. So, this is our first look at her in this game. 44 for one then. The required rate from here is just over seven with a bit of leg spin there as that's just guided away on the leg side by Danny White and that improvised way that she does with a cross bat and that's gone down towards fine leg. And that'll be two more to White who takes on to 15 and it's 46 for uh, one. You would have seen a lot of Danny White out in Aussie as well, I guess. Or yeah, just anyway. yeah, she, um, yeah, obviously against Australia, but then uh, she plays for Melbourne Renegades as well in the WBBL. Comes in again, and Wyatt just goes for the little hoik over the keeper there, a little ramp shot. It was very close to her, well over the head of Abby Freeborn, though, and that will be two more. Another improvised shot there from Danny White. So Melbourne Renegades. Yeah. Um, that's that's mostly what she's done in, a, yeah. done in Australia, but, um, yeah, like I said, very experienced cricketer. Um, I've seen her play more against Australia than, than in Australia, probably. <laughs> 143. T20 internationals, Danny White, to go with 102 one day internationals. She'll be looking to uh, very much be part of the uh, England side when the Ashes are contested next month. That's turned away on the onside, but this time straight to mid wicket. I have just had a look at my notes and she actually played for the Brisbane Heat last season. Oh, was it Brisbane Heat last season? <laughs> yeah, oh, of course no, she did. So yes. she, she played for the Melbourne Renegades um, for, for a couple of years, actually. Um, she played with the Melbourne Renegades 2015 16 season and then 2019 20. It's a missed drive and an ask for a stumping by Abby Freeborn. Neither are out. We'll just wait for the bows to be uh, replaced. Yeah, she's played a bit of Big Bash. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's for sure. Played in the fair break tournament as well she back did. in April. She had she quite a busy winter, didn't she, really? Played yeah. in some exhibition matches in Pakistan as well. Mm -hmm. 48 for one, but missed out on the uh, WPL, which I know she was very keen to be part of. Yeah, yeah, there was a few in the WPL that was surprising really. Yeah, it was a surprise when she was out of the hat and nobody bid for her, she, uh, or bid for us, I should say, as that's a cut away into the covers. That'll be a single. White moves on to 18, 49 for one. Yeah, she's at that stage, isn't she, as well, of her career really, where I think she's just looking to cash in a little bit, isn't she, probably? Yeah, and, and you know, just kind of, she just wants to just play a bit of cricket I think sort of like recreationally maybe but she's still obviously making teams but yeah um she's probably not too too fussed about like England sort of side of things now it's just wherever she can play she'll play really Faltam on the back foot misses tries to work that through the covers and again there's a player miss outside the off stump end of the road uh, end of the end road it's the end of the over Faltam has one De White has 18 49 for one Ella McGacken one wicket that's fallen 
she went for 26 that was 42 for one so we've had seven overs we've got 13 to do and just five runs uh, off that uh, over and uh, Danny Wyatt will face the first of the uh, next ball so you were, you were telling us a lot about Nicole Falton mm -hmm. who, uh, who came over here to play for Sussex yeah, so her initial plan was to come over here and play for Sussex and then um, she, she had it in her mind and she was told that she was going to be playing some um, second 11 stuff for the Vipers. But then, uh, yeah, she's had her call up and um, hopefully today's her day. I think uh, she's, she's hoping that today's her day as well. Like you said, she's, she's had a bit of a tricky start, but um, she is capable of scoring runs and we know she is because in the back end of the WNCL in Australia, the women's 50 over comp, um, she made a 100 and a 70 and a, and a 50 odd as well. So she is very, very capable of scoring runs. Um, she does it in the Big Bash, captain the Melbourne Stars in WBBL 08. So she's a good cricketer. She just uh, needs a needs a bit of an opportunity to yeah, show just it. to settle. You know, maybe any nerves. Maybe she just wants to show everybody just what a good player she is, and she just hasn't been able to show it. Erin yeah. Burns is switching ends. Uh, she's still bowling a cap. Has anybody she told her actually that the sun? Is not as strong in Birmingham as is in Australia. Uh, I don't know. Maybe they haven't. But she's bowling in a cap. That's cut away by Wyatt to backward a point, no run. She does it all the time. Does she? Well, yeah. she obviously does that in Aussie. I can't. Yeah. I can't do a lot of players in Oz bowl with caps? Not really. No. No. Um, yeah, Aaron Burns is one, and uh, Gemma Barsby is is another one that I've seen, but not many others, I don't think. <laughs> Down the wicket comes Wyatt. She's going to take a quick single. Perhaps just took a little while to get going, but safely home it's nicely placed by white who moves on to 19 and that's 50 up for the vipers in the eighth remember they're chasing 143 for uh, victory yeah I, I, I don't know i just um i, I mean the sun's out so i kind of get it but I, I can't believe it's as hot here as it is no it's not <laughs> it's definitely not this is probably <laughs> like our winter this weather <laughs> all right um. uh, now there's a nice shot slog sweep in the air but it could be out and caught it deep mid wicket and felton goes Slog sweep across the line, but it was in the air. And it was a simple catch in the end. And Falton goes for one. Another failure for her. The Vipers 50 for two. Yeah, uh, very unfortunate for Nicole, isn't it? Like we said, I mentioned it off air um, to you before. It's, you know, she's, she, she is capable and she can do it. But what she does is she just tries to rush her innings. And uh, like you said, she comes out here, wants to sort of show everyone what she's made of, rather than sort of getting her eye in, you know, defending a couple out and then starting to play her shots she she's been being dismissed in a couple of silly ways which she probably shouldn't be so yeah disappointing to see uh, Nicole Fulton go after all the, the talk up of her really yeah I mean it, you know it's easy to do I mean that actually is quite a nice shot but unfortunately there's not enough on it there's not enough height mm -hmm. and um, if, if she's going to play that then it's got to go along the ground yeah. you know that, that, that's it's a fairly decent boundary out there we're not quite central here the wicket's a little bit to the right towards the holly standards we look but it's it's pretty central and um it, it still needed a strong hit to get it over the rope so unless you're really backing yourself and unless you're in tip top nick uh, the chances are that it's not really going to carry and that's exactly uh, what happened uh, there that was uh, katie george that uh, took that catch out in the deep well judged from her in the end she didn't have to move too far and uh, the new batter is the Vipers captain uh, Georgia Adams who uh, in her four innings has scored 122 runs in this competition so far and she's striking at 117 per 100 so in a pretty steady tournament actually as she's on the back foot she's off the mark straight away Danny White just takes a little while to acknowledge the call but she's home safely 51 for two and the Vipers need another 92 from here so Erin Burns it's going to come round the wicket to Danny White. That's an interesting move. She was over the wicket to Adams. Burns, two balls left of a second over. One for 13. Balls, and that's pulled away by uh, Danny White along the ground. Out towards deep square leg. And that's fielded by Amy Campbell. 52 for a two. It, um, it interests me that the, the Sparks sort of really use Aaron Burns. Um, in their bowling attack because in Australia she's sort of like the, the backup option. Is that right? That's yeah. short and it's hammered away. This could be Katie George again and it is. Well, that's a carbon copy of the dismissal of Nicole Falton. If you watch it on the replay later on, you'd think it was the same player. And Adams goes for one. And Katie George, again, safe pair of hands out there at deep mid wicket. 
And the Vipers are now 52 for three. Adams goes for just the single. Yeah, the, the Sparks, I think, are aware that this is sort of where they, they started to tumble a bit here. So um, they're getting well on top of the Vipers and they're just wanting to, to sort of slow their, their runs down. So that's uh, Faltam and Georgia Adams out for a single. The Vipers were 42 without loss at one stage. Ellen McGacken then went for 26. Faltam and Adams has followed pretty soon after. And here they are now 52 for three, still needing another 91 runs. That task for the Vipers has just got a whole lot harder. And Burns has picked up a couple of wickets. I seem to remember in the Rachel Hayhoe Flint Trophy game earlier on in the season, Burns took an amazing court and bowled. I don't know if you saw it. If you watch any of the video replays and what have you, Emily Windsor slapped this ball back at her and she died full length to her left, got a hold of it two-handed. Absolutely amazing catch. Yeah, she's, she's a brilliant fielder and, and she's obviously extremely uh, talented with the bat as well. But yeah, back home, it's just not something that um, you see her yeah. do bowl very often. Incredible, isn't it, to hear you say that because she's picked up a couple of wickets. Here's Hannah Baker with her spin at the other end as well. And uh, Danny White hits down the ground in the air and that has gone for four, one bounce. Well, Danny White is not worried about what's going on at the other end. She's going to continue to play her game. Yeah, Which, not fast, no. <laughs> Danny White. She hits a lot in the air. I've said it often and uh, she continues to do that. But I think that's what makes her dangerous. Mm -hmm. She gets out doing it. That's uh, uh, part, of the, uh, part of the job, really. But uh, she does score at a fair rate of knots and is quite happy to hit the ball in the air if she has to. She drives there. That's along the ground this time, out in the covers. She moves on to 25. And the Vipers move on to 57 for three. All the time Danny White is out there, the Vipers will be OK. She's that player, sort of player. She's a match winner. She'll keep, make sure that the rate is above what they need, just to make sure there's a bit of insurance, a bit in the bank. But when she gets out, all of a sudden, things can look just a little different look a little harder. Georgia Elwes, she's experienced on her side as well. Played a lot of international cricket. She's in at the crease and faces Hannah Baker. Plays it into the ground. As Abby Freeborn comes around from behind the stumps. You'll have seen a bit of Georgia Elwes as well, I guess, over the last few seasons. Hasn't played yeah, international yeah, cricket for a little while, mind you. No, she, uh, she was with the Melbourne Stars mm. for, for quite a bit in the Women's Big Bash. It's a nice drive, but only as far as uh, extra cover. So she would have been a teammate of Faltam's? Uh, I think, she, uh, yeah, yeah, she would have been. She would have probably would have only just crossed paths, I think. Just about, yeah. Nicole Faltam started playing for the Stars when she was 19. Oh, right. That's driven yeah. to mid-wicket. Not no, 19, right. 17. 17. 17. Wow. Young one, yeah. 57 for three. We're coming towards the end of the ninth as Elwes is on the back foot and cuts that away back with a point. There should be at least two. She runs the first one. The throw comes in now. Just a slight fumble with the pickup out there from Beth and Ellis. And that allowed El um, Elwes to come through for a fairly comfortable two in the end. And that is nine overs gone. And the Vipers are 59 for three, needing another 84 off 11 overs. Yeah. It's bubbling up nicely. A, a super experienced batting pair out there at the moment, isn't it? Combined, the amount of games, runs, and uh, time spent out on the field in an England Cup is is probably quite a lot, I'd say, um, between between the pair. So, uh, yeah, Danny White and Georgia Georgia Elwes, um, if they keep on going, uh, you know, it's probably safe to say that the the Vipers are well on their way. But yeah. Well, she's had a fairly quiet tournament, Georgia Elwes. Four innings before today, just the 46 runs. So her strike rate is 80, uh, is 83. So that's a little bit down on the way she can play. New bowler into the attack is Georgia Davis with her off breaks. Going with uh, plenty of spin here at the moment, the Sparks trying to take pace off. 11 overs remain, then 84 needed to win. So you can work that out yourself. It's just about eight and over as she comes in now. And there's a sweep shot there from Danny White. I think that's come off the pad. It's gone very fine. What's the umpire going to signal? Oh, there's a little bat on it. And White moves on to 26. There's Davis from our commentary end, the pavilion end. We're three floors up. We've got a great view. We're just slightly to the left of the pitch, left of the action as we look, but looking down on it. As 
Davis comes in again and bowls and Elwes slog sweep on the onside in front of square wide of uh, mid on I think there'll only be a single she does well on the boundary there Erin Burns quite nimble out there that's why she's on the rope 61-4-3 she wasn't able to get any birthday runs Davis so I'm sure she'll be wanting <laughs> a birthday wicket <laughs> That's why I forgot it's her birthday today. Yeah. yeah. Now there's a slog sweep. Daddy White is in the air, but there's nobody back on the square. That's quite a deliberate shot. She'll know there's nobody there. That's why she's played it. And she moves on to 30 now, and it's 65 for three. Uh, the Vipers. No birthday present yet for Georgia no. Davis. No, unfortunately not. <gasps> yes, uh, made naught when she uh, batted, looking for at least a wicket, something to help those birthday celebrations, which I'm sure are coming later. Yeah. If she, well, I hope she gets uh, some nice birthday presents if she can't get <laughs> the wicket today. <laughs> Something to make up for it. Oh, she's only gone for six runs. Changing the field, there is now a deep backward square leg for that sweep shot. And she's coming round the wicket. Mid off is coming up now. That's Ellie Anderson is coming up from just below us onto the 25 yard circle. And a bit more of a gap on the leg side. There's certainly a single should Danny White want it around that square area. But uh, the Deep square leg boundary is now protected. Just taking a time. There's lots of field placings, lots of just tinkering with the field here by Eve Jones. As Davis comes in again and she goes with a cross batted shot and split the field on the leg side. Four runs. Beautiful shot, Danny Wyatt. Well, the field was set for the slog sweep and she's played a slog sweep but a lot straighter. It's just right into the gap, isn't it? We had, we had this conversation at the start where. Um, you know, Eve Jones was just managing to to always find the gap, and Danny's following similar lines here. She is, yeah. She's 34 now, 69 for three. Wyatt just quietly pushes that out on the offside, as if to say, well, I've got a few runs this over. It doesn't matter if you mm -hmm. bowl me a decent ball. I'll just quietly play that away, and we'll play the next ball. 69 for three means that the Vipers need 74, and we've got the last ball of the 10th over coming up, so we're just about halfway. Wyatt plays that late. And that's a single down to short third. And after 10 overs, halfway through the Vipers reply, they are 70 for three. White is 35 from 24. Elwes is three uh, from five. And after 10 overs, uh, the Sparks were 72 for uh, three. So we've almost got an even contest on our hands. Uh, Lily is uh, staying on. Lily uh, Harvey, I think. Am I right in saying? And then uh, taking my place will be Mike Taylor. Is that right? Everybody's looking at me as if I'm mad. Uh, I am, uh, but hopefully I've got it right. So Southern Vipers are 70 for three after 10. George Elwes on three runs and Danny Wyatt on 35, I think that says. I'm, I'm, my eyesight is very bad. Um, and my scorecard is not updated on my on my laptop no. yet, so. 35 is wrong. 35, okay, I'm glad, I'm glad. Spot. Oh, it's a struggle. It's over number 11, uh, Hannah Baker, uh, with right arm wristpin from the uh, Birmingham end, drops a bit short, and Wyatt pulls away into the lakeside for one run. So long as Danny Wyatt is batting, there's no, I don't think there's a problem here for the Vipers. No, I don't think so. Um, yeah, I think like like we mentioned in the first innings, they've they've got a good, really good batting lineup. Vipers do. A step across the stumps here from Elwes, who drives out through extra cover, and there's one to the fielder coming in from the boundary. Seventy-two for three. It's still a target that's going to keep them honest here. Still need just over sevens, mm -hmm. so uh, there's a bit of chasing to be done, and the pressure can come on late in the innings. Absolutely. When you've got two players of, uh, you know, like Danny White and George Rowell sat in the middle, it's, um, yeah, you d the, the Sparks have just tried, got to try and break up this partnership, really, to sort of get anywhere at this point. Um, They've seen most things in their careers. Yeah. Now, it's a bit of fidgeting going on. Wyatt's now ready. She's 36 and waits for Baker. Drops shorter again here, but Wyatt doesn't beat the short mid wicket field. They didn't quite get hold of that it was into position early but Amy Campbell cuts it off and there's no run 71 still to get uh, forward comes Wyatt pushes away into the covers but again it's the field 
Hannah Baker, young leg spinner. Do you want, do you want to just try and take any guesses to who uh, who inspired her leg spinning? Well, uh, it, it, it Every leg spinner of that uh, generation looks to warm, don't they? Yeah. As, uh, as his back go <laughs> to the edge correct. of the surf, we all did. Davina Perrin correct. making a good diving stop to the left here to cut uh, off for one. The thing is, when Warren suddenly came on the scene, not only was he brilliant, but there were so few bowlers like him. Mm -hmm. Baker bowls and she's driven down the ground for one run. The bowler can't stop it in a follow through, so they'll have one to long on. It's the end of the over, 74 for three at the end of it. It was so new. There was a, a, a world level. There was Mushtaq Ahmed, but there weren't many others doing that. Now everybody's got a leg spinner, especially in T20 cricket. Um, four from the over. Hannah Baker did a good job. Lee Harvey's making way for Claire Jenkins. The Vipers need 69 more runs to win, and there are nine overs. Still to go. You talking about leg spin, weren't you? Yeah. I think uh, I think people thought that uh, short format cricket would be the, the death of spin, but actually, um, you know, taking the pace off seems to have worked quite well in uh, yeah. men's and women's games. So well, yeah. look, the, the earlier the Sparks, uh, the Vipers bowled 12 overs of spin out of 20. I saw a, tw a 2020 game the other day when the Bears bowled 16 overs of spin. The all spin game is not far away, I see. Right. Ellis into. Oh, it's gone in the air, straight to Davina Perry, and it's a catch at point. That's another wicket for Central Sparks. Beth and Alice gets a wicket there. It's getting more exciting now, Mike. Another wicket goes. Beth and Alice's first ball, it was floated up there for driving, but Elwis got, didn't really get into any good position to play that. No, um, she saw, I, I, whether she changed her mind partway through and realised that she was about to post that straight to the field, I'm not quite sure, but... So uh, Southern Vipers find themselves 74 for three here in the 12th over, just at the start of the 12th over. So Beth and Alice, it's a, it's a handy first ball. And every wicket just increases the responsibility on Wyatt, who have, is probably the player in the match best equipped to cope with it. But all the same, okay. it's... Uh, the Vipers look a little more to her with every wicket that falls. Yeah, because um, Beth and Alice did well against the Thunder. She got two for 22. And um, she had the best economy rate. And she also caught Liberty Heap in the first over. So uh, Beth and Alice had a, had a good game against the Thunder. And we're just hearing that Karis Pavley is on the Yes, I think she was there at the start of the innings. But Pots. Yeah, I hadn't quite figured out... Yeah, I think. Who but uh, yeah, Karis Pavley, another one of those under 19s. I think you mentioned that earlier, didn't you? Because they were mispronouncing her first name as Charis, and it's actually Karis, I think. I understand. Mm. Uh, so Dean comes in to face first ball from Bethan Ellis to Charlie Dean, who's surveying the field, having a look at some gaps. Bethan Ellis winds herself up, comes in from the Birmingham end. Played forwards and strongly down to long on. And Erin uh, Burns will tidy that up. And that's just the single. 75 for four. It's also a little bit of room now for Eve Jones with a six bowler introduced. Yeah. Beth and Alice, of course, joining from, uh, as we said, lightning little blazers they are now. So um, enjoying the fact that she's on the pitch because she's been running drinks at some of these games, but knows is establishing herself in the side as she comes in to Wyatt crouches and plays that up in the air there's a fielder underneath it but it would be oh Katie George that would have been an absolute Specky's only diving forward but she just just dipping just in front of her agonizingly but they do get through for two runs so the score moves on to 77 for four just dipping I know you can't see that because I, I know frustratingly you're only looking down the wicket but just dipped in front of Katie George and if anyone was going to take that that was going to be Katie George as Ellis comes in to oh it's gone in the air again we're going to get oh, that's going to go straight over that's a six 
Is that the first six of them? First six first of the game. Six of the game, and, uh, Michael. It's getting exciting now. It was a tempter, a full toss, yeah. and a player as good as Wyatt wasn't going to miss out on that. The, the drop catch was one of those, I think, where the field has got to make a decision. Am I going to risk going yeah. for this and the, the risk the ball bouncing past me? As it happened, the ball caught a trailing leg as yeah. she missed it. But I think it was worth the gamble. Yeah, I think so. To try and dismiss because Wyatt is, for a while, there are good players there with you know, Dean and Windsor yeah. still to come. Wyatt is the wicket that holds the key to the match here. Well, and she's she's heading towards that 50 if Central Sparks can't conjure something up. She plays that straight to the cover fielder. Eve Jones, a skipper, and there is no run. 83 for four. Last ball of the 12th over. And uh, Vipers need 60 to win off these last few overs now. Ellis comes in from through the sunshine. Oh, goes. I don't know. I think <laughs> Danny Wyatt looks accusingly at Anne Harris there. Thought she was going to get a wide there, but uh, there was no run. So that's the end of 12 overs. Vipers are 83 for four. They need 60 to win here in the Charlotte Edwards Cup against Central Sparks, who are the West Midlands regional team. This is the competition between the eight. English regional centres of excellence. This is the layer below England. And um, it's coming towards the end of the competition because the finals will be at Worcester next Saturday. But Central Sparks need a win, as Mike and uh, I know it's been mentioned earlier, but Central Sparks need to win this. And they also need some uh, scores to go well. Um, Lily's worked out that the, the missing fielder is Abby Freeborn, so that's why Caris Paveley has been out there, oh. having to do an awful lot of running around the field <laughs> uh, because uh, she's been largely been patrolling the long boundary. Eight overs to go and the Vipers have still got to find 60 runs. Uh, Dean is on strike too as Burns, the uh, becapped Australian, is back <laughs> to uh, start the 13th over and there's a gap at extra cover through which uh, Dean drives a full delivery and takes one. I like that becapped. I think I like I'm not that. even sure that's a word. Well, I, I, I think it is now. Okay. That's good enough for me. Yeah, I mean, it's been on the BBC. Be so capped. So it's, uh, yeah. It must be right it then. It must be right. <laughs> um, uh, eight, 84 for four. Uh, Burns is going to come round the wicket. It's one of these spin bowlers. The ball is always fidgeting in her hands. Yeah. And there she comes up to the uh, uh, crease. And Wyatt Ooh. shuffles down the pitch Ooh. and then dabs the ball just backward of point. They take a short single. And Perrin fields, but they're through. Dean quickly responding to the... Uh, the senior colleagues call. So Wyatt is 46, the highest score of the match so far. And uh, it is 85 for four, 58 to win in Scuttles Burns. And back goes D Dean, but doesn't time this forcing stroke on the offside. Did we say that um, Burns got a five for against the Vipers earlier in the season? Uh, I'm sure we did. Mm -hmm. um, Long on his back, but mid off he's inside the circle. There's no huge gap between mid off and extra cover. He's coming to cut off the drive. Uh, and down the pitch comes Dean and was beating the flight there and ended up with a, an adjusting a stroke and pushing it away awkwardly on the offside. <laughs> there was a change of mind in the middle of there, wasn't there? Or well, several. She spins the bat. Beating the flight might not be the right term <laughs> because there's not a lot of flight here. Burns is firing the mid of it. There's a bit more flight in that one, and Dean yeah. slog sweeps and he's caught at deep mid wicket. Yeah. Katie 85 George. for and five. Uh, Katie corner. George's third catch and held that very securely. And the drip of wickets are just as we saw in the Sparks innings. Each successive wicket that falls, the new batters are not finding it easy to score at the rate required. And each one that goes means that there's more dependence for the Vipers on Wyatt. 58 still to win. Dean caught George, Bond burns two, and it's 85 for five. Is, have they all been cow corner? Mike, because I missed some of them. I was I was in the back of the box or something. Uh, yes, three catches at deep mid wicket for Katie George, which is quite a treble. Yeah, quite and all off for uh, Burns, who I'd, I'd have to say, if you're down interviewing, I'm not sure I'd lead with that to uh, Erin Burns. Three quarter at cow corner. <laughs> he lured them into matter. the lured There's them into no the marks. cow corner trap. There's no marks for style, Mike. It doesn't matter how, does it? You can do this. You. you can do this ugly, as they say. <laughs> Um, we don't mind. And it, was it a trap? That's the question. I mean, was it was it meant to be? I mean, you what? think you put Katie George, you put Katie George where you expect the ball to go. So, because she's such a brilliant fielder. It's it's a very big area out there. Yeah. Um, 
you'd think, you know, you know, if I'm slog sweeping, then I can pop the ball. I mean, there's 50 yards of room either side of Katie George, and that was hit <laughs> more or less straight to her. Yeah. Um, Burns now fortified by that, waves the mid wickets inside the circle round a bit, and he's going to bowl to Emily Windsor, who's back in the crease and guiding her first ball away on the offside for one run. 86 for 5. And if this is the Sparks' last stand in this competition uh, this season, insofar as if they don't win this game, they yep. can't uh, lose this, their last chance of advancing in it, then uh, they're making a very good job of it. 57 still to win. Yeah, last chance alone, as you mentioned. But yes, the sunshine here. It has been tricky for new batters. We saw this earlier on, mm. for to keep going at the rate. And I think maybe the, the Sparks were thinking, well, we're, we're trying to score 160 here, and uh, new batters come in, they try and score quickly, wickets fall. Yeah. The same's happening here. The, the Central Sparks have quite a selection of bowlers, though, don't they? So this is kind of interesting. Uh, you know how Eve Jones deploys these bowlers is going to be key, and also uh, putting them in the right position, uh, mm. as she obviously clearly has done for Katie George underneath these catches. So Anderson, Burns, and Baker have only got one more left each. Yeah, as Alice comes in from the Birmingham end to Emily Windsor, the right-hander. Oh, it's straight through Emily Windsor and it goes straight to Amy Jones, and there is no run. Missed that completely, Mike. Went it's back. It was quite it. close to cut. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it wasn't all she that far wide of the off stump. She got cramped up there, didn't she? Eve Jones hands the ball back to Bethan Ellis, who's running in from about 20 yards, I imagine. Right arm over to the right-handed Windsor. Comes forward and plays that straight through Eve Jones, unfortunately, and they get through for a single. Goes underneath the captain's hands, and that's 88 for five. We're into the 14th over. Wyatt must exert authority now. The uh, required rate has crept up near to eight and a half and over now. Yep. Why on 46, so she's heading towards that milestone of 50. Will she get a 50? And uh, Windsor, she's got a couple of runs off, off the couple of balls that she's faced as Sparks twiddle with the field slightly and the long ons and the long offs a bit going slightly wider. Ellis to Wyatt who plays that backward of square it's going to go to the rope that's four runs that was a, a easy just guided the ball almost hockey style backward yes. of square there in the gap easy runs there for uh, Danny Wyatt who reaches that milestone that I talked about and that's the that's the applause that you can hear so Danny Wyatt's 50 comes in I think 34 balls 34 it's very balls. small that, that writing on the, yeah. on the, on the scoreboard a six yeah, and six fours balls. and 34 oh. balls, you say. And that was a real, a, a clever manufactured stroke because mm. she fetched that from outside off stump. Yeah. Did you say like a sh hockey short almost corner? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like a dragged corner. And that's played almost the opposite side, um, but straight to Georgia Davis, and there is no run. 91 for five are the Vipers. They need 52 more runs. 6.2 overs. So what can Sparks do to try and keep the lid on this and get some wickets. I need some wickets here as Vipers head towards that 100. That was a big swing and Amy Jones takes the, the bails off there as Danny Wyatt gets completely the wrong line and then practices the shot that she should have played as the ball went straight through her and there is no run. She's suddenly looking a lot trickier than we thought, this choice. Yeah, this could be... Uh, we, we, we like a close game for the we, for the neutrals. I wonder where Eve Jones is thinking of finding these six overs from. I don't know. Ellis to Wyatt, who plays that in the air. Is there a fielder underneath it? I think it's going to be a long way. No, it's one bounce four. So another four to the total. This would be the way uh, that uh, Vipers get this um, by finding those gaps in the field as Vipers move on to 95 for five off 14 overs. They need 48 more runs. As you say, where are Sparks going to get these wickets? Eight and over they need. There was quite a lot of work for Janney Wyatt to do with that stroke because mm. it, she heaved it round from rather than hitting it to mid-wicket where others have perished. <laughs> um, she hauled it round to square leg where there was a bit more room. And now with six overs to find, there's one left from Anderson.
Burns and Baker. And so at this point, it turns again to George Davis, who got a bit of rough treatment in her first over that went for 11 runs. There's still two more of Katie George, who was quite expensive. Mm -hmm. Katie George could be quite uh, mm. qu quite good towards the end if, well, if they're uh, lower order. Having the sixth bowler used gives a bit of room for Eve Jones. As here's the 15th over beginning oh. with a drive out into the offside by Windsor, and she gets a single. There was a sling there from Eve Jones yeah. to try and uh, affect the run out there. I don't think it was that far out, but unfortunately uh, clipped the heels of... Uh, Emily Windsor, I think, probably end up with a, a bruise on her foot as uh, Georgia Davis decides to go the other way around the wicket. Yes, coming to bowl to the right-handed Wyatt, who is exerting a bit of authority here by making the bowler wait. And here <laughs> comes Davis creeping up to the stumps, right arm around the wicket, and oh. Wyatt sweeps oh. over, short fine leg, and he's going to get at least two runs. It's going to beat the sprint around the boundary, and Pavely so cross she couldn't get to that, but she was always three paces short, and it was just over the short fine leg fielder, Ellie Anderson. Yeah, agonising, because she's quite tall lass as well. Yeah, she was three the feet short of getting that, though. Yeah, um, I suspect stuck on that... Uh, 25-yard circle, really. She couldn't really go backwards, unfortunately. So, uh, yeah. Nearly, nearly, nearly. Wyatt to 58, 100 for five. And forward comes Wyatt to meet the next delivery and turn it to the leg side. 43 to win. 100 up for Vipers. That will give them a bit of a, a bit of a boost, but as you say, 43 still to get. Still nearly, nearly eight and over. Round the wicket comes Davis and a slanting this Ooh. across Wyatt, who drives probably for four runs. But Perrin couldn't stop it at the edge of the circle, and once it was past her, it was always odds against the fielder coming round from cover point on the boundary and two fours in this over for Wyatt. Swing the pendulum back in favour of the Vipers, who now only need 39. Yeah, c uh, unfortunately. Uh Perrin could not quite get a hand to that to stop that, and as you say, it was too far round for the cover point fielder to take that. Winds around the wicket, and back goes Wyatt, and defends uh, straight back to a Davis. Rare forward defensive there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, at the moment, Wyatt is batting with the sort of authority that she can pick and choose the ball she wants to attack. Mm -hmm. And this time she does attack and cuts hard. This one's past Perrin, but it probably will be stopped on the boundary. Yes, it's. Uh, Running round is uh, Beth and Ellis, keeps them down to two, but a productive over for the Vipers. Uh, they scored another 11 from that, 106 for five. Five overs remain. The Vipers need 37 more runs to win, and in so doing, very much advance their claims for a place on finals day, and if they get them, end the hopes of the Sparks. Yes, uh, Claire Jenkins joined by Kevin Jones. Yeah, Kevin, thank you, Mike and Kevin Jones. James is going to come back in to give me a bit of uh, support here. Are you feeling more confident about the Vipers now? Because I know that you're, um, you know, you're from the South Coast. You're not supposed to be. <laughs> I'm Vipers, actually from London we? originally. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, with your accent like that. But you, you're up from the from somewhere. That I'm up from the, the south. The yes. Of the sea and uh, anything north of the M27 is north for me. <laughs> we have got Anderson coming in from the Birmingham end to. Emily Windsor is having a big look at where the gaps are in the field. Eve Jones is just changing. She's bringing out a th short third. I think that's uh, Georgia Davis coming into a short mid wicket there, I think. We've got fielders out at deep long on and deep cow corner and deep long off as well. And that's worked into the offside and they get through for a single. 107 for five. They need 36 more, the Vipers. Yeah, what's, what's I your mean, feeling then, Kev? well, it's it's well, well, Danny Wyatt's out there, one of England's main batters, mm. experienced, and well, the the finisher at the other end, as they call Emily Windsor oh, yeah, these the days. Yeah, finisher, that's right. Yeah, you know, I, I it's from the hundred and the yeah, the, hundred and several the, Vipers some of the matches yeah, as well. Some of the regional stuff, she said. It's um, it, it, you know, the, you, you can't, but you can't. For me, you can't rule out any any result here at the moment. No, that's eight games. Anderson comes in to Wyatt, crouches and looks accusingly again at Aunt Harris, who's the lateral movement, I think, gave, uh, gave a bit more uh, leeway there to Anderson Ball that was outside of the bat for Danny Wyatt. Another dot ball, that'll be key 
Central Sparks need some dot balls and some wickets here as Vipers need 36. Anderson in Wyatt plays that to short third Ooh. and they get through. Oh, it was a risky single, but um, <clears throat> through in the end. <laughs> Intake of breath from Kevin. She had a lot to do, Windsor, there, didn't she? <laughs> she did. <laughs> she might, might have wanted to set off slightly earlier. Uh, 108 for five are the Vipers in response to Central Sparks. Vipers need 35 more from four and a half overs. Ellie Anderson is really impressed me in the Under-19 World Cup, and I think she's getting into a stride here for Central Sparks. Windsor plays that square to Davina Perry, who does a lovely diving stop there, and there is no run. Nice bit of field. I always appreciate a bit of point fielding as, a, as, a, as an ex. Of course, fielder. that was your spot, yeah, wasn't it? I remember you saying, yeah. 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 And it's Lesser Story called me the um, universe badass. I'm still embracing my inner badass. She reckoned that being at point was a badass point. But, uh, really? Yeah, I mean, you had to be there, really. Uh, as Anderson <laughs> comes into Windsor this time. And that's, again, carved out through the point region. And Davina Perrin does another lovely diving stop, but they do get a single that time. So 109 for five. Vipers need 34. From 25 deliveries. Yeah. So it's uh, much more than oh, a run of ball. It's going to get exciting, Kev. Well, it is now. I mean, it's, you know, th there's still a lot of cricket to be played here by both sides. I've got one more ball and then Samara's going to be coming in. So Ellie Anderson coming in from the Birmingham end. Tall figure, the ponytail swinging as she goes into Wyatt. Wyatt steps across, plays that into the offside. And let's just get through for a single. That's the end of that over. So four overs left. It's getting exciting now, Kev. <laughs> 33 to win. Uh, 110 for five are the Vipers in response to Central Sparks. I'm going to hand you over to Dr. Samara. Afsal, and I think he's going to probably give, bring you home here with, uh, with our Kev. Thank you very much, Claire. Yes, uh, an exciting game to kick off this double header here at uh, Edgbaston, a sunny Edgbaston later on. It's the North Group game between the Bears and uh, the Outlaws, but right now we're focusing on this match, and it's coming to a, a lovely conclusion here. 24 balls left in this game, 33 runs needed by the Vipers. While well, Danny White is out there, she's 66 off 45. He would say the Vipers have got every chance, but you just feel that if Danny White was to fall at any stage, Samara, uh, the Vipers' total, uh, or the Vipers' uh, challenge might just become that much more difficult. Yeah, it's uh, very exciting at the moment. I uh, love a very having a close T20, and I think this all goes down to the wire. It certainly is. Here's Hannah Baker then with her leg spin, and uh, she's trying to sweep that is Danny White. I think she's got hit in the midriff there. I think that's hurt her a little bit. 23 balls remain now, and uh, the Vipers still need 33. It's getting, with every ball that's a dot, it's getting that much tougher. I think all the hopes for Vipers are on Danny White, and I think, as you said, if they get that wicket, the Sparks, then I think it's going to be very tough for the Vipers. Certainly is. Uh, just to go back to Ellie Anderson, the 19-year-old, what terrific figures, four overs, no maidens, one for 14. Absolutely terrific spell from her, which has kept the pressure on uh, the Vipers. Erin Burns, who's bowled three overs, three for 17. I'm sure we might see an over from her before the end. But uh, they have certainly uh, held back the Vipers as Danny White goes for a big one, gets on the 45, wins us home. She's quick between the wickets, but it is only a single. 22 balls left and 32 runs are needed. If you were a betting man, who would you put your bet on at this well, point? Well, they're going to need a boundary or two here, the Vipers, and pretty quick. Otherwise, that equation's just going to get a little too tough. But I don't know. I, I think either side will feel they're, they're in this. That's for sure. Baker bowls. Down the wicket comes Winder and works that out into the gap on the offside. But again, it's only a single. They're keeping the scoreboard ticking along, but that's all at the moment, with 31 needed off 21 balls. I'm going to put my bets on Central Sparks. Well, that, that's, yeah, I, I, I think you could argue either, can't you? Either side, you could say that's a good bet. Baker comes in, flights it. Right, it goes over extra cover, but there is a deep fielder out there. That's only a single. It's a good shot for one. And uh, that's 20 balls left now. And the Vipers need 30. 113 for five. Wyatt's on 68 now. Windsor, six off eight. As Baker comes in and bowls from that far end. She cuts and misses. 
That's normally her shot there, Emily Windsor, but she's missed that one. And there are now just 19 balls left and still 30 runs needed. Last ball of the 17th over. Baker bowls to Windsor, comes down the wicket and drives out to extra cover, but that's only a single to Eve Jones. And Windsor's going to keep the strike, keeps Danny Wyatt away from it. 29 needed, three overs left. Some good tight fielding here to complement their bowling. Central Sparks have been yeah. brilliant in the field. They certainly have. And at that total of 142 for nine, it could have been more from the Central Sparks, but at the moment, it looks more than competitive. We've got a serious game on our hands here from two sides that, well, the Sparks need the win more than the Vipers, but both sides need it if they want to give themselves a chance of being in the top three come at the end of next, well, come next Saturday. That's when the finals are. And I would say even with three wins for the Sparks out of three, they're probably still probably more or less out of it. But certainly three out, three out of three gives them a chance. A win here for the Vipers certainly gives them a chance of claiming maybe even second spot, let alone third. Who have we got here then, Samara? Just looking to see you. It can't be Leander Sink, she's done her four. It's um, Beth and Ellis, number 14. Yeah, going to be bowling some of the seamers. Two overs, one for 18 for Beth. Emily wins on strike as Beth and Ellis comes running in. And she comes out of the ground and she hits that over the head of cover. But they manage to get through for two runs. Looked tight at one point, but uh, it's a good running. They need more of these, Kevin. Yeah, balls. they did, yeah. I thought that might just go all the way, but it didn't really seem to come out of the middle of the bat. But nice attacking shot there from Emily Windsor. 17 balls left, 27 needed. Beth and Ellis in again to Emily Windsor, who again has a big swing at it, and it goes down to the mid on fielder for one run. 26 off 16. There needs to be a boundary or two here somewhere. Otherwise... The Sparks are going to squeeze this. Interesting field change. Deep square leg for Danny White. And now the mid on, oh sorry, the mid off is up and the extra cover is up. So the shot over the top there is on. Beth Nellis into Danny Well. She takes a big swing and she's hit that. Has it gone straight into the hands of the fielder? It has. It's gone straight into the hands of the fielder there at long mid on. The Aussie Erin Burns, number 20, taking the catch, and it's all over for Danny Wyatt and potentially all over for Southern Vipers. Well, you just knew the minute that ball went up in the air, all it had to be was Erin Burns making sure she held on to it. She actually made a little bit of a meal of it in the end. <laughs> she, I mean, it looked a fairly safe catch, but she still managed to go to ground. But that's a big blow for the uh, Vipers and uh, a big wicket for the Sparks in their quest to win this game. White goes for 68. 117 for six now. Vipers chasing 143. They've got exactly two and a half overs left. And they need 26 runs. It's going to be very difficult now for the Vipers. Danny Wyatt gets a big round of applause. That was a very, very good innings from her nonetheless. She just never really got hold of that, did she? A cross-batted shot in the air. Just never really got the power into that shot. And the new batter is Nancy Harmon for uh, the Vipers. She's got a lot to do here, supporting Emily Windsor. Emily Windsor's going to have to take the lead now. So what do you got? 15 balls left and still 26 needed. Bethan Ellis comes in this time to the new batter, Nancy Harmon, who just plays that but straight back to the bowler for no run. Well, those balls are running out now, aren't they? 26 needed or 14 balls now. Boundary imperative. And it's always hard for the incoming batter. When oh, horrible situations, yes. aren't they? You'll have been in this situation as well, aren't they? They're horrible situations as a new batter. Beth and Ellis back in, and that's a big sweep shot into the air, but straight to the mid, um, deep mid on fielder. They've managed to get a single. I think they need to try and rotate the strike as much to Windsor. Yeah. She's the, I'd say, set to bat in playing. She's played 12, 13 balls now. Yeah, it's not easy. That leg side's well protected. 
Bethany listen to Emily Windsor, who plays that straight, and it oh, went through the field at mid-off, and it's gone and hit the boundary rope. Unlucky there for Ellie Anderson. I think it just went underneath her. Well, she's gambled. She's gambled there and gone for the catch, and in the end, the ball, the ball, the way it bounced, has just beaten her. She didn't. She could have been more defensive and just let the ball bounce just in front of her, but she's gone for the catch. It was a bit of a, it was a bit of a teaser. That was the thing, wasn't it? Really, do you go for it or do you hang back? She's decided just to move forward, and in the end, she's kind of yorked herself, isn't she, in the field? If you can york yourself on the field, that's exactly what she's done. That is a much-needed boundary. Windsor moves on to 14 from 13, I think that is, or 12. Uh, 122 for six means the Vipers need 21 from two overs. They still need at least two or three boundaries, probably more than that, really, to get the, it down to a runner ball. So there is still a lot of pressure on the Vipers, still a lot of pressure on Harmon. Uh, here's uh, Erin Burns into the attack, and down the wicket comes Harmon, drives that to extra cover. They'll take the single. Eve Jones is right back on the 25-yard circle. She doesn't mind them coming through for singles. She knows that singles aren't enough. The Vipers need to mix those up with some boundaries. 20 needed off 11. What a start to the day this is, with the game, another game coming up later on. Burns with a rospin comes in. Windsor comes down the wicket, doesn't really get hold of that, goes out into the covers. They may still run two. Windsor wants two. Harmon says no. Windsor just looks around and says, I would have gone. I would have gone. 19 needed off 10. Wow. Erin Burns into her last over here. Three for 19. Good figures from her as well. There's been some good bowling from the Sparks this afternoon as she comes in. Down the wicket comes Harmon. Drives. But again, the field is right back on the circle at mid-wicket. And that'll only be a single. And 18 are needed off nine. So it's two a ball. That's not easy. No. The Sparks here are squeezing them now. They are. 125 for six. Windsor back on strike. As Burns comes in again, she's gone for a little ramp shot. Hasn't really got hold of that. It'll only be a single as it goes out to short third. Perrin comes round. And eight balls are left and 17 are needed. Time is running out for the Vipers here. The Sparks squeezing it. Erin Burns not giving much away with her bowling, keeping a very tight line length. Only giving away singles, which at this point won't uh, cause any harm to Central Sparks. So the field's changing. They've now got a short third in, just reinforcing that field behind square on the offside. This takes away that little reverse sweep. Henry Burns comes in. Down the wicket comes Harmon. Drives, but gets an inside edge. Winston's going to have to hurry. Is she home? She just dives in full length. My word, that was close. But Winston's home. I thought that was out for one second. Yeah, I have to say, that looked very, very close indeed. I'd have wanted a replay. <laughs> Where's the, uh, the video replay when you need it? So, seven balls left, and the Vipers still need 16 at 127 for six. Burns bowls. Down the wicket comes Windsor. Hits it wide and mid on. Is it wide enough? Not quite. Oh, it's pushed over the boundary. Miss field. It's gone for four. What a time. What a time for a miss field. And that's a bonus boundary there for the Vipers with six balls left and 12 needed. Definitely not what uh, Central Sparks would have wanted, but um, great runs for um, Southern Vipers. An extra three to their total where the, so they would have got the one. They've had a boundary. Pressure. There is. certainly is, isn't it? My word, this is exciting. 131 for six. Remember, 143 is the victory target with the... Sparks having made 142 for nine. Windsor is 20 of 16. Harmon is four of five. We've got six balls left to be bowled by Beth and Ellis. And the Vipers need exactly two a ball with 12 needed. Ellis, three overs, two for 26 so far. And she's bowling the final and the crucial over as she runs into Nancy Harmon, who comes out of a reason. She's stumped by Amy Jones. Great start to the over. Wicked first ball. Yeah, she almost yorked herself coming down the wicket there. Beth and Ellis kept her cool. She's Claire now Jenkins picked up three. Excitedly uh, <laughs> running around the country box. So Nancy Harmon goes for four. And that is a ball used up crucially, as well as the wicket. Crucially, that's another ball gone. And just five are left. And still 12 are needed. 11, of course, for the tie. Mustn't forget that. I don't know what the rules are for ties in this. Is there, a super over? Look up. Eh? is there a super over? I don't know. <laughs> That'd be nice. I haven't seen the tie in this yet. Uh, the new batter for uh, the Vipers is Alice Monaghan. 
Amy Jones behind the stumps. The England keeper's not going to uh, miss those. No, she's uh, brilliant behind the stumps, Amy Jones. No Abby Freeborn. She's off with an injury. So five balls left. And uh, Alice Monaghan, who uh, doesn't get a lot of chances uh, with the bat. She's, uh, in fact, <laughs> she's only had one bat in this competition so far, and that was naught against the Blaze in Derby. So she has yet to score a run in this competition. Three times she didn't actually get to the crease. And now they're asking her to help score 12 runs in the last five balls. Monaghan on strike as Bethan Ellis runs into ball and she takes a big swipe at that and it's gone straight to the long on fielder. They're trying to get a second and is there a run out? No, there isn't. Monaghan gets back to the non-striker's end. And that's one run. 11 needed off four. Has to be a boundary somewhere now. Has to be in the next couple of balls. Otherwise it's all over. Emily Windsor playing on 20 off 18 balls. She takes strike as Bethan Ellis comes in and she has a big swing at that. It goes to the long on fielder. Erin Burns out there. They managed to get through for a single, but uh, singles will not help them at this point. Well, ten runs needed off three. Got to be a boundary now. It has to be. Alice Monaghan's got to find a gap somewhere. Where's she going to look? The, the leg side boundary is... Well, in fact, the square leg. I mean, there's a shot across, across the uh, line of the ball if she wants it. Bethany Ellis in Alice Monaghan has a swing, but she misses and it not collected by Amy Jones either. And they managed to run through for a single. Ooh, not looking good now for Vipers. No, no. Nine runs needed off two balls. It's got to be two boundaries in some shape or form. In fact, two fours are not enough now. Two fours will give a tie. But uh, she's got to hit a six if they want to win this game outright. So Bowler Bethan will make sure that she's not uh, giving any extras at this point as Windsor's on strike. And she comes out of her crease and she's stumped by Amy Jones. And that's probably the end of the Southern Vipers' hopes. Well, it's been terrific, isn't it? They've got it down to the last ball. But uh, in the end, Beth and Ellis, absolutely superb figures. Four for 28. And uh, she's done a great job under pressure. And Windsor goes for 21, 134 for eight. And this now is going to end with a victory to the Sparks. Just one ball to wait to confirm that with nine needed. Well, <laughs> we're talking about the pressure Monaghan was under. What a time to be walking out now when actually it doesn't matter what you do. <laughs> yes, but I imagine there'd be, there will be still some sort of extravagant shot. Can you imagine going out there and just defending it? <laughs> Well, she might as well. I mean, what, what do you do now? I mean, a six isn't enough. And not, it's an, unless it's a no ball, of course. I suppose you just have to hit it in the hope that the umpire calls a no ball as the ball comes out the middle of the bat and sails off the boundary. Or you hope it's a wide. Yeah, or a wide or something, yeah. I mean, what, I mean, Ellis now has to make sure that she doesn't get into a situation where she has to bowl another ball. Lindsay Smith, the new batter. Probably the final ball as... Bethan comes in, Lindsay Smith, she just hits it to the onside, collected by the fielder there, and that's one run, and Central Sparks have won the game. And it's been a brilliant performance from them. I thought 143 was probably about 20 runs short, but they've defended it, and um, it's their second victory now in the um, Charlotte Edwards Cup. Yeah, seven-run victory for uh, the Central uh, Sparks, their second win in this competition, having first beaten the Sunrisers in their uh, opening uh, match. And uh, for uh, the Vipers, well, they still have a chance of qualifying, but uh, I'm afraid it's going to go to the last two games where they play the Northern Diamonds uh, at uh, the weekend and they finish at Hove on uh, Wednesday. But an exciting game, Samara, nevertheless. And... Uh, it's been a good game, it's been a good game to watch, but in the end, the Sparks just getting enough at 142 uh, for nine. Uh, Samara, I think you're staying on. Uh, we're going to wrap up. Uh, we are going to wrap up. Uh, so uh, thank you very much uh, for listening, Samara. Well, I know you're pleased the Sparks have won that, I can tell you.
I am. I'm very pleased, and I think um, they needed that victory to give them that confidence. And um, they've lost two of the games so far, so um, this is good. And uh, you never know; they might still qualify into the finals. We've seen stranger things happen in cricket. We certainly have. Yeah, they're clinging on the uh, Central Sparks now. They're down at Western Storm tomorrow down at Bristol. Claire Jenkins is going to be there, so make sure you listen out for uh, Claire. And uh, Danny Wyatt with 68 off 49 deliveries, the standout performance for uh, the Vipers. And uh, some good bowling all round from the Sparks, three for 26 from four from Erin Burns and four for 29 from uh, Bethan Ellis. Uh, superb bowling her, from her at the end. Thank you to Claire Jenkins. Thank you, uh, Mike uh, Taylor. Thank you to uh, Lily Harvey. And Samara, thank you very much, Samara Afsal. And me, Kevin James, hope you enjoyed listening and uh, watching. And we'll be with you again very soon.